We're also going to disable that cleaning room. Ms. Canfield, you know to look for the, I know that I see the agenda, you're fine. You know to look for the raised hands. Thank you so much. Yes, I'm on two screens here. All right, thanks everybody. We will begin this meeting shortly. We just want to give everyone an opportunity to uh, log on. I think we have everyone out of the waiting room. So if the board is ready, we can commence the meeting. All right. Uh, welcome everyone. I'm Karen Canfield from the Select Board. This is the Town of Situate Select Board meeting on Tuesday, May 11th. Uh, we are beginning here at 6.31 p.m. And in response to Governor Baker's declaration of public health emergency and related emergency orders, uh, the Town of Situate public meeting shall be meeting remotely until further notice. This meeting is being recorded. It can be re viewed live on Situate Community Television Facebook Live, um, if you've found us there, thank you. And uh, the recorded meeting will be available tomorrow on Channel 9, as well as the Situate Community Television YouTube channel. Uh, so those, that's the housekeeping to start. I'd like to um, call for uh, uh, the meeting to order and for an acceptance of the agenda. Is there a motion? A motion. A motion to call the meeting to order. All right, moved by Ms. Kern, second by Mr. Vignani. Um, and because we are operating remotely, every vote we take this evening will be by roll call. So, uh, Michelle, if you would facilitate. Ms. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Vignani? Yes. Ms. Conley? Yes. Ms. Curran? Yes. And Mr. Goodrich? Yes. Very good. The motion carries 5 0. Um, the agenda is accepted. We will now go on to Zoom in and walk ins. If um, there is a member of the public that would like to, sorry, while well, I put up my first participants here, would like to address the board on a matter not on the agenda. Uh, this is your opportunity to do so. You can raise hand literally or use the reactions button at the bottom of your screen to uh, raise hand in the participant column. And I'm scrolling through. I do not see anyone with a raised hand. So then not seeing a raised hand, then we will go on to the report of our town administrator, Mr. Bedreau. Good evening. Um, first for the COVID updates, as of yesterday, we went through the new phase of the reopening of the state's economy. The large venues such as indoor and outdoor stadiums, arenas and ballparks currently open will be permitted to go from 12% to 25% capacity. Amusement parks, theme parks, and outdoor water parks will be able to operate at 50% capacity. <coughs> Youth and adult amateur sports tournaments will be allowed for moderate and high-risk sports. And singing will also be permitted indoors with strict social distancing requirements. The next milestone is May 29th, depending upon the COVID data that we get between now and then. Uh, on May 29th, street festivals, parades, and agricultural festivals at 50% of their previous capacity. Bars, beer gardens, breweries, wineries, and distilleries will be subject to restaurant rules for seated service only and subject to public health and vaccination data. The restaurant guidance will be updated to eliminate the requirement that food be served with alcohol and to increase the maximum uh, table size to 10. And then effective August 1st will be the final phase of the reopening. And that will be, for all intents and purposes, the reopening of the economy. That is all dependent upon the COVID data between now and then. So we'll just have to keep an eye on that as we do every week. Uh, as of right now, all residents of the Commonwealth 16 or over are eligible for the vaccination shot. You can register or you can go uh, walk in to one of the mass vaccination sites. Effective tomorrow, you'll be able to go to Marshfield and drive through without an appointment. So anybody 16 or over is currently eligible. Uh, the um, CDC will be considering tomorrow making the vaccine available to 12 to 16 year olds. Uh, that decision should be made over the next several days. But again, anybody under the age of 18 must go to a facility with Pfizer. Only Pfizer is approved for people under the age of 18 right now. Uh, why we're doing this, I do need to give a big thank you to the town of Marshfield. Not only did they set up the vaccination clinic for the entire county, uh, but they gave us 200 slots for our teachers when they became available. And last week they gave us 200 slots for 16 to 17 year olds uh, over at the Marshfield Clinic. So we sent those back to the high school and hopefully those were all filled, but they've done a lot of work, been a great help to us. Uh, so I wanna thank them for that. 
Since last Monday, we had nine new cases in Scituate. That's down from 19 the previous week. We have moved into the green on the state color-coded map for, for COVID risk. Our 14-day positivity rating was 1.9, down from 2.59 the previous week. Uh, the state was 1.24, down from 1.49 the previous week. So numbers are all trending in the right direction. We need people to still follow the guidelines and really the common sense is if you're on other people, put your mask on. If you're not on other people outside, you can take your mask off, but use common sense when you're out and about. Uh, Front Street outside dining is now back open. Uh, as we did last year, we blocked off two, two and a half spots in front of the galley and allowed them to use those parking spots for outside dining. They're the only establishment on Front Street where the sidewalk is not wide enough to have dining on the sidewalk. So we've allowed them to use that. That's the same as we did last year. Uh, the outside dining was wildly popular. I've been down there already this year a couple of times. See people eating outside on days that I don't even want to be outside. It's so cold, but people really seem to like it. So we'll continue that and keep an eye on it. Uh, Peggy Beach parking lot. If you've been down there, you'll see we have a paved section of the parking lot. This is a FEMA project. So we are replacing what FEMA deemed to be damaged and eligible for reimbursement under FEMA rules. Uh, that paving is done right now. We've done the top coat. It was very wet yesterday, so we're going to let that dry for a little bit. It may be that we don't come back until after the beach season to put down the top coat, but the parking lot will be open. Uh, in the meantime, when the paving settles down a little bit, we'll go out with processed material, fill in the rest of the parking lot as we always do, and make sure the total parking lot is accessible. Uh, Cole Parkway Marina project is just about wrapped up. You see they're taking the cranes away now. The marina is scheduled to open on the 15th. We will meet that deadline. The current installation of the new deck next to the uh, gangway will not be done. Uh, we had to change that based on where the pilings were going. So they have to order some new railing material, but that won't hold up the opening of the marina. Also, right after the marina opens, we'll be doing a little bit of work on the sewer connection for the pump out boat. Uh, that'll take a day or two, but again, neither one of those will delay the opening of the marina. Uh, the project is for all intents and purposes done, so we're happy with the way it's come out and people will be able to get back out in boating. Uh, another project that's nearing completion is Cedar Point. The major construction is done. The contractor will spend the next couple of weeks cleaning up, warming and seeding those places he needs to, making patches to the road. Uh, every, as we've mentioned in the past, we will not pave that right now. That will sit. Uh, those are pretty big trenches, pretty deep trenches. So we do anticipate that there'll be settlement on those on those patches. So we'll let it sit for the summer and then when we pave it in the fall, we'll get a nice even uh, sheet of pavement without any dips or uh, settling. So we'll keep an eye on it. If we have some real problems over the summer, we'll go fix them, but the final paving won't take place uh, until the fall. The water department has finished flushing for the spring. Hopefully we'll be back in the fall, depending upon the water. The water construction on Bailey's Causeway is scheduled to start tomorrow. Uh, maybe Thursday now, the contractor is on an emergency job. Uh, if you go down there, the water main does not extend over Bailey's Causeway, so it dead ends on both sides of the, the causeway. When we put in the culvert there, we put a sleeve in for water line. So when we loop that water line, that will significantly impact the water quality in a good way, and it will also impact the water pressure in a good way. So people down there, when this project is done, should see better water quality and better water pressure in that area. So that will be the start of it. After that, uh, I believe they'll be going up and starting in around Front Street and going up that way, doing those water projects. We get about $6 million in water work that we'll be doing this summer in various parts of town. The reservoirs at 3.5 inches spilling over. Uh, we want to remind people the water restrictions are in place. They were in fact May 1st, all watering done after 5 p.m. and before 9 a.m. In-ground irrigation is limited to one day per week based upon your voting precinct. Uh, the average Usage for the water treatment plant for the last four days, seven days, sorry, was 447,000 gallons per day. That's down from 552,000 gallons per day from the same time last year. We had a rainy week, so that just shows people how much water we put on lawns. Um, it's a lot of water. We need you to conserve that water. Don't put it on the lawns, uh, as the water commissioner in Nova likes to say. We have plenty of water for people. We have plenty of water for pets. We don't have plenty of water for pet grass. So please do the best you can to conserve the water, save it for potability and things like that. But we are in our water bin and we will continue to monitor that as we go along. 
Finally, we get an update on Ship Shape Day. Uh, we all know how good that is and, and how much that makes the town look so much better. Uh, according to our DPW department, the residents this Ship Shape Day picked up more than eight tons of trash, 10 tires and a computer uh, during Ship Shape Day. Normally, Ship Shape Day does about five tons uh, of trash, so you can see how much they picked up and what a difference that makes around town. So we want to remind people, right now we have over 100 barrels around town. After Memorial Day, that number goes up over 150 barrels around town. We have a two-man crew working every day to empty those barrels. If a barrel is full, please do not leave your trash on the ground next to the barrel. It gets blown around, it gets picked up by the animals, um, with DPW, again, they have a full-time crew. All they do is trash, but you need to help us out. You need to take your trash with us if those barrels are full. And if they're all full, call us and we'll send the guys to get them. But please don't leave trash by the barrels. Don't leave trash behind you. Eight tons is a lot of trash, and we don't want to have to go pick that up again. So please help do your pot, and we'll be able to keep such a clean. And that's what I have for today. Great. Thank you so much, Mr. Bedreau. Uh, does the uh, board have any questions for Jim about his report? <clears throat> Ms. Curran. Thank you, Chairman Canfield. I don't really have a question, but I just wanted to say, Jim, thanks. I was down at Cedar Point this morning and um, I think it's really impressive. And I think everybody really um, owes, you know, you, Kevin, Will, and the whole team really executing that project. In my mind so far, really right flawlessly, you know, really very few hiccups. We were blessed with a good winter, but I didn't think I'd see it completed <laughs> in, in one season. So. Um, great job. And I just wanted to call you out and just say thank you to all of you for all your hard work on that. Yeah. And don't forget Sean McCarthy is on the call. Sean's the engineer. Who oh, will call Sean, that sorry. Kevin. Dude, so, where are you? Uh, Sean and Kevin and Will were really the guys um, that oversaw that project. I just nodded my head and agreed with them a lot because I don't understand what the heck they're doing down there except thinking bigger. So uh, contract was very good. We're very happy with that project. I know the residents <laughs> have been very happy with the project. They've expressed that happiness. Uh, to Kevin and Sean. So um, yeah, they get all the credit for that. I'm just a guy who signs the checks in the end. All right, Sean, take a bow, Kev, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, but thank you. I just wanted to give you a shout out because I think you deserve it. Yeah, that's great. Um, any other board members? No? Well, I, 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 along the same lines, not that this is, a, I mean, it is a love fest always at a board meeting, right? But uh, <laughs> I, um, I did one of the same thing to the Waterways Committee, Harbor Master and Jim on the project in the harbor. I mean, you think about how many major projects were done over the last quarter, basically. I mean, obviously they're long-term planning to get them to those place, but you know, thank you, Jim, for being at the helm and, and especially to also, you mentioned Ship Shape Day, DPW and the Beautification Commission, they run that unbelievably well. So we're very blessed with, with the staff and volunteers that get all this stuff done. So um, I do see a resident with a hand up. Do we have, a, do you have a, Mr. Diaz, do you have a question for Mr. Bedreau about his report? Hold on, wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're muted, you have to unmute. Hold on, Let's see if we can, a lot of moving parts. Seth, did I screw it up? You did not, Craig, do you know how to unmute yourself? So Craig, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna, you see the little button go down, there you go. There you go, hi, Mr. Diaz. Yeah, and I apologize, I thought I, I was trying to, um, put my hand up for the public hearing part of this. Oh, and for the zoom-ins? Yes. Um, okay, well, I'm happy to revisit that. Let me just see if, let us finish the report and then we'll okay, flip no the problem. agenda. That, okay, thank you. Uh, are there any other questions for the town administrator? Okay, all right, we will We will give you a technology pass and um, invite you to give your name and address and go back to zoom-ins. Craig Dyer is 168 Stockbridge Road. Um, a few a few months ago, me and Jim walked my property, and there was a problem with the where the town washed out my um, driveway, and it was going to be fixed. And recently, my understanding is there uh, Karen, Karen Johnson from the planning department came onto my property and said that my driveway was unsafe and. Um, it's unsafe and you can't get fire departments or emergency access down to my driveway. And I just recently found out 
uh, Friday or uh, that there's a public hearing on my property for my property. I don't know what it is about for the 13th. And I'm out of the country doing humanitarian work. And I'm really baffled of that this is going on. And I'm asking the town um, to hold off on any hearing that has to do with 52 or 415 uh, on my property because I have not seen anything. My daughter has not gotten a notification. I know normally if you have any kind of hearing in this town, you have to be served with a notice of some kind and saying you should appear or someone should appear. Uh, but I'm really confused uh, because Jim and I walked the property. And I think if Jim saw this uh, driveway to be a problem, he would have said, you have to repair this right away. And it's a problem. So okay. I don't know where Mrs. Uh, Karen Johnson's coming from. I don't know what's happening, but it just feels like uh, my understanding, I, I'm working, I'm trying to work something out with my neighbor on a piece of my property but it's not his property, it's my property. And for me not to be at a hearing, uh, it okay. would be disturbing so, because I don't know what rights I'm gonna give up from the town. So I'm asking tonight if someone from whoever has authority puts it on hold. I'm coming home June 6th, I'll be home. I'm more than willing to go to a hearing if, and if my property's damaged and the town already was supposed to go fix the damage, Okay, Craig, can I, I think we understand the issues and we've discussed this. I think the best thing is if you can give Jim a call uh, tomorrow in the office so that we can uh, go through the specifics. I don't think we can resolve all this tonight. Um, okay, no, no and problem. I, that I, would I be really good. It's what agenda, it's, it's an A&R for, for their form A, a &R approval not required, but I can get some information from Karen. Uh, Craig, don't bother calling me. I'll talk to the planner tomorrow and get back to you. Okay. Jim, the only thing I'm saying is I don't, I don't mind going with it. I know there's gotta be, but I just, I never received not, I don't even know who, I know a lawyer might've presented something, but I never seen it. I never got to read it. Okay. And my, well, we lawyer's need... never, my new lawyer's never read it neither. So all I'm asking Jim is just to hold it off until I get home. I don't, okay. I don't know to see the planning board, Craig. I can't tell them what to do at the hearings. They're a separate elected board, but let me find out what's going on and get back to you tomorrow. Thank yeah. you so much. All right. You guys have a nice day. All right, thanks Craig. Thank you. Yep. Um, okay. So if no one else has a Zoom and walk in, we'll get back on our regular agenda. I don't see any other hands. Um, so our first, uh, it's Patricia here. Our first item is a board and committee interview for the Situate Housing Authority, the tenant board member seat. Um, as the board may remember, at our last meeting, we did interview several candidates for this position and Ms. I hope I don't say it wrong, Altieri uh, wasn't available and uh, she's, she's on our agenda today. I will also note that Ellen Mulcahy has uh, withdrawn her application. Um, so when we do get to the voting part, um, just so the board's aware. Uh, do we have the applicant? I don't know if I see her on the- If, if Patricia's here, she's going to have to raise her hand. It could be under okay. a different name. All right, Patricia, if you are here, can you make yourself known by putting on your video or raising your hand? Because the names are not showing. I do not see her name. All right. I assume she was obviously alerted to this meeting. Um, was. Okay. All right. Well, I would think we should soldier on and because uh, we are past the, the posted time of the interview and should she come on, we'll see if we can squeeze her and if she is able to join us. Um, so that would bring us to special events applications. There are three, um, we are ahead of schedule. So let me see, is um, uh, James Burke or Aubrey Schwartz on? I don't think they're on yet. So Nikki, you may get to jump line on that too. <laughs> um, so why don't we do that? We will wait for them because we are ahead on that. Um, and we will go to um, Ms. Saunders is representing Situate Pride for a movie night application and a Pride walk back uh, application. Um, we did receive all of your backup. So we um, have had a chance to look at that. But if you'd like to um, 
give an overview. Why don't we take them one at a time? You, uh, you can pick which one you want to go first. Okay, we can start with the movie night. Um, I have um, Stephanie Burke and Richard Taylor here who have done a lot of work on both of these things. So um, I'm gonna hand it over to them. And then if there's questions I can fill in and, and ask. All right, we've, uh, we've given them the power of co-host. Hello, Mr. Taylor. All right, can you hear me okay? You're all good. Hey, I'm wearing, can you see it? <laughs> oh, that's nice, I like that. <laughs> um, and the first thing I wanna say is, you know, uh, the whole organization Situate Pride is we want to bring economic development. We want to involve all members of the community, not just the LGBTQIA+. So uh, in addition to obviously the walk and the movie night, we are planning some other activities. Untold Brewing is going to do a special Situate Pride beer, which I'm really excited about. So I just wanted to let you, everyone know, I think I know everyone here, that we're really trying to involve the community. So I just want to say that up front that we, we're an organization that wants to lift as the, uh, the water analogy for Situate. We wanna lift the tide <laughs> for all boats um, and especially focus on LGBTQIA. So the first uh, application, we're gonna be doing a, a drive-in movie night and we've got uh, permission uh, to use the, the new Gates parking lot. Um, and uh, Stephanie uh, Burke has been fabulous she has organized to do Kinky Boots, which if you haven't done, and now this is Kinky Boots, the musical, not mm -hmm. the movie. So the musical, it's, it's fantastic. It's a very uplifting story. It's PG rated. It should be for everyone, for families. And it's all about inclusion and you know, accepting people for who they are. So I think it's a great message. So that's our first application. I don't know, Stephanie, did you want to add anything? Um. No, um, I, 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 there was some confusion um, about permission with Gates as far as a form I saw last minute. Um, I was never given a form from Jen Arnold, but we did get, I do have an email. They said Gates was okay. And I was just at the Chalk the Walk event and um, spoke to uh, Mr. Reedy and he said it would be okay and he's willing to sign whatever he has to sign. So I'm not sure where that form comes from. Um, I didn't get it from Jen Arnold or her assistant. So if I could figure out that form, everyone is willing to sign it. So that's it. I'm gonna mute, you're gonna have to unmute me again because my children are in the background. Yeah. Okay. And as, as far as, I'll, I'll speak for Stephanie, we're gonna, the second application for the Pride Walk, I've talked to the police chief and we are probably gonna need a, a police detail, but mm -hmm. I believe for the movie night, since we're gonna keep it under 50 cars, right, Stephanie, 50? 40 cars. 40, 40 cars. We're going to keep it under 40, so we won't need a police detail for that. It, it, we, we have volunteers to lead in and out, and we've provided enough time um, that should allow, um, you know, we're going to emphasize the, 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 expended, the extended time to park to allow cars to come in. So hopefully people um, don't all come at once. We actually are going to have 10 volunteers press plus the pride board themselves. So that's already um, 15 cars in general that will be there before. Um, so we feel the cars will arrive at a, at a time that would be um, conducive to allowing volunteers to guide the traffic. Okay. Um, I did have a couple of questions about this and just the first one is, so 40, you've got 15 coming. You're not going to have that many tickets available. What's your process for uh, making tickets available and how are you going to, um, you know, let people know when they're sold out, which I'm sure they will be. <laughs> they're going to be available on our website. Um, so we'll sell, we'll sell them on the Situate Pride website. And um, with that, we cap the amount. So we'll have a limited amount available. So we can't sell past the amount of cars. Um, what we're going to do is open it up to volunteers first. So if you volunteer, then you have first right at purchasing a <laughs> ticket. Um, and so that'll be open to the public, but it'll just be um, volunteers will get a first purchase and then it'll, and then it'll open to the public um, after we fill the volunteer spots. Okay. And is this meant to be a fundraiser or just to cover the cost? It's meant to cover the cost. We might come up with uh, like maybe a hundred bucks after the end of it or 200 bucks. Um, um, the Broadway they are actually going to take um, half of ticket sales. So basically um, we just have to figure out the cost that if they take half of ticket sales, 
um, how much it's going to exactly cost us. And that would depend on whether or not, I know each town is different. I know some towns have required um, porta potties and some haven't. So we have to work that into the cost if you're gonna require that. If you were going to decide that we would need a detail, then we'd have to do the math on that. But right now we have a ticket price range that was is basically meant to cover the costs. Okay. Um, I'll open it to the board. Have any additional questions? I don't wanna monopolize the questions here. Ms. Kerr, uh, Connelly? Is there a rain date for any of these events? Mm, good question. You know, that is a great question <laughs> and uh, we really haven't discussed that to be honest and we probably should. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, I, we have another meeting this Thursday um, and that's one of the many things that will be on our agenda is what do we do if it, it rains or things don't work out or um, so backup plans and all of that. But I would assume it would be the day before the day after. It, it, right, the um, movie well, night is scheduled for a Friday. Um, the, that's right. That's rain or shine. The movie day. That's why okay. it's in the car. Okay, So the rain or shine. The movie's rain or rain shine. Or shine. Um, because you can do it in the rain. I mean, if it's if it's a nor'easter or something in the middle of summer, <laughs> some, like we'll have to discuss that. But right, everyone um, hopefully will be in their cars. So yeah, the car. I'm sorry, if they're in their cars and it's raining out, their windshield wipers are gonna. It's it's gonna be. Well, I'll I'll have to go over the details, but the contract the says rain. Um, so he says they've done them in the rain. So I'm assuming there's a level of rain that we're talking about. But yeah. Um, he says that he's done them in the rain, but you're right. The windshield wipers with the rain. Um, Make you dizzy. Yeah. So I'll right. double check Let's hope on for that. no rain and yeah. certainly not a deluge of rain if we have any. Yeah. Right. Well, I think so we'll discuss uh, rain date for the walk this Thursday. So for our, I think for the board's purposes, we can only um, uh, discuss and vote on the applications that we've received. In the event that they need to be modified, um, I uh, I would think at some level we could authorize Jim to approve. Uh, Jim, is that can we give you like authority so they don't have to come back if you know with a certain per perimeter uh, parameters, unless the board feels um, that they need to come back with us information. I mean, you're really just um, authorizing me to approve a rain date. Okay. Um, once, you, once you approve the event, then it's just, you know, it's not, the, it's event. Just it's not the day, it's the events that you really approve it. Okay. Yeah. And you'll, you obviously have a lot more homework to do if you need a rain date, you need to get that organized with, um, with a school or with uh, the police detail. Okay. Um, Karen? Yes, go ahead. Well, I just want to suggest that with the movie, if you have to pay someone to have the movie and you have to cancel it, you don't want to be out of pocket, do you? No, I, mean, I, mean, I would want a rain date for that as well. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a great idea. I mean, it's a, it's a something that we will, uh, I think, just try to, to decide. I don't know, Stephanie, if the, the contract allows the movie for, let's like, say, the following day. It's more, yeah, the con, the they're very flexible with the broad. We're actually one of the first groups to do this um, for them. They had to like write a new thing. So it's really exciting because they only recorded the Broadway version, um, you know, I think a year and a half ago. So, um, but they, um, it would just be, it's more the screen that we would have to make sure that there's, there's there we can get a screen for that date. So that would be the biggest, right. biggest one. Okay. So but I, They'll have to kind of give me an idea when they want to do it. Then we have to just make sure that there's not some international track meet or something else going on at the school <laughs> that day. Yeah, I, I would think since we have it scheduled for Friday, the it's the 18th, right, Stephanie? Mm -hmm. And it would be we try to do it on the 19th Saturday if that would be possible. Okay. So you, would, yeah, you guys have to do that homework. So yeah, exactly. You, you figure that out and then and then circle back with Jim on that. Um, are there other questions about the movie night from the board? Oh. All right, the only, I, I actually just had a technical question. Do you know where you're gonna set up the screen? Is it gonna be facing town hall or facing the hill? Do you, have you laid that out yet? Yeah. I don't, do I don't think there are any abutters, but that could be an issue. Yeah, so the map um, has it uh, where the... Yeah, I was just gonna pull it we up. have a copy of the map, Karen. It's in the back. I know, but I couldn't figure out 
the orientation. So um, hold on, I, I just want to pull up. It's the same orientation that Shore had it. Um, we're copying. If you um, so, pardon me here. I just want to make. All right, Mara's got it. She says it's fine. So she read yeah. it right. It's along. It's along the driveway, and it's situated really nicely because that parking lot slopes, Tips so the down. people in the back can see. Oh, cool. Okay, yeah. and and there's apps no butters, so you don't have to worry about lights and stuff. Yeah. Good. And I want to say that this event, the reason we had this idea is because it had been done by other uh, groups within Situate. Mm -hmm. Like it was done at the, was it the Coptic Church? There was, they had a movie yep. night. There's been some other ones at different locations. So we thought it would be good because it's not the first time it's been done in Situate. Right. No, and it's, they're always well received. That's what we're going to talk to Mr. Burke about next. We jumped to, sorry, Mr. Burke, you'll be next. Um, other, if there are no other questions, other questions about movie night, um, why don't we jump into the logistics and Pride Walk, um, and then we can discuss and vote at the end. So the Pride Walk is the date is what? I'm sorry, I don't have all my The 26th, in. I it's think. It's Saturday, the, the 26th, and I guess we should do a rain date of Sunday, the 27th, now that we had the rain date discussion. <clears throat> um, and so we, we included in the application a map so um, basically, uh, we're going to sort of gather and park at the exact place that the movie is um, mm -hmm. at the Gates parking lot. And it'll be a Saturday afternoon, or actually morning, I'm sorry, 11 a.m. And um, I spoke to the, uh, the chief of police who said that they would need a, a detail for, even though we're just going to be on the sidewalks, we're not going to be on the road, but we're crossing, um, you know, the way the sidewalks it's on the left-hand side at the beginning, and then it's on the right-hand side after you cross Country Way. So you're going to have to cross First Parish. Um, that was going to be a, an issue, and uh, he mentioned that. And let me see if I, of course, I don't have the um, <clears throat> the email right in front of me. I think he mentioned another um, crossing. Yeah, the Probably. second crossing is after the um, the new senior center on to go around the common. So there's another. There's another crossing on First Parish before we, so we're going up from the middle school parking lot to towards the common and then around the common. And then um, we're gonna do what we did last year for the walk, which is just like, you know, a talk, thanks for coming and whatever. And then people can disperse from there or walk back and get their car. Um, so it's, you know, there's, I think there's two, two major, major intersections and one is by the new senior center and the other one is country. -led. Yeah, I finally found um, Mark Thompson's. He said that the two intersections are First Parish and Beaver Dam, right? And that's that crazy intersection that we actually fixed a little bit recently with the, the now the, Old Gates School doesn't actually uh, exit at the same um, con, uh, location. And then the other one, the intersection would be the First Parish Country Way. And it says, he, he's saying, are two, definitely two areas of the greatest concern to the mm -hmm. police department in terms of traffic and pedestrian crossings. So that's what he had mentioned. Um, are you doing any kind of sign up? Will you have any sense of the numbers or is it just an announced public come and support? How's that it's work? It's an announced public come and support, but um, our anticipation is no more than between 100 and 150. I don't know that we'll reach 100. Um, and sorry, that was the that was the approximate count last year was just yeah. under 100. Right. So there may be a few more people, but I don't I don't think it would be um, a large event. Yeah. We we have extended the invitation to some surrounding towns. Um, you know, this, this year has been a great year for a lot of these groups. Uh, Cohasset has organized a pride group. Hull has, a, has had a pride group for a while. Um, and Hingham is organizing a pride group. So we've certainly in, uh, asked them if they wanted to. Um, and we've asked the churches in town. And they, we've had some really good uh, feedback. Uh, the, the Lutheran Church um and the um trinitarian, trinitarian yeah mm -hmm. have have come to our meetings and expressed that they would like to maybe have a a flag or a, or a walk with us as well okay. um 
questions from the board? No, I feel like I, I asked them at the last meeting. So no, I'm good. Okay. So I just want to say um, the rest of our events are on Zoom. Uh, we have a speaker coming to talk about um, sexuality and sexual identity. And we have a, another straight talk. It's a crosstown straight talk with uh, people in the queer community across towns. Um, so the other events that we have, there are other events, but they are not um, requiring large gatherings or details or they're not as elaborate. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, well, great. Well, thank you for organizing. I um, I, I should have gone back. I, 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 how does the board feel about not requiring porta potties for the movie? I mean, it's not. It's only forty cars. Um, we've done. We've required it in others. Um, and I, that was just one thing I wanted to put out there for consideration. Did we? Did we require it last year? Um, I, for the I, I take it back. One? I don't think we required it. They provided it. it was in their original application. They were also selling lots of refreshments and sure. Yeah, that's true. Kind of in, in a pinch, there are some porta potties around the back by the baseball field. Okay. Okay. There you go. Um, okay, good. Are there any other questions about either of these proposed events? Kevin has his hand raised. Um, oh, Kevin, you're way up in the corner. Mr. Cafferty, our DPW director, would you like to chime in? Just briefly, I had signed off on this um, without any issues, but I'd ask um, before you do have it, just take a walk and look at the area, see if there are any issues. I know Mike was going to be doing some possible sidewalk improvement and some improvements in that area. So if you do see anything, um, you know, do it earlier in the week, let us know and we'll try to address it beforehand. Okay. I Thank did you. walk it. Um, it was probably a couple weeks ago and everything seemed fine, but that was a, a while back. Yep, I know Mike was scheduled to make some repairs in that general area, so just prior, you know, um, just catch up with us, that's all. If, if you see anything that looks, that could be hazardous for anybody walking. Great. Thank you, Kevin. Um, I do see another resident with a hand up, but um, Ms. Green, would you like to address, uh, uh, ask a question about either of these applications? And name and address, please, for the record. Susanna Green, 337 First Parish Road. Hi, um, I, I jumped in a little bit late. I, I was just curious for the, the walk, is that a similar route to the Memorial Day Parade where it goes up First Parish to the Common? Is that my understanding? I think that uh, comes from the Harbor, is that right? No, no, the so, Memorial Pit goes from, from Town Hall, normally from Town Hall down yeah. to the Common and then there's yeah, a same program. Route. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, same route. Um, do you happen to know the time for it? Yeah, what'd you we're, say, Richard? 11? I was staring at 11, I think. And 11. so we would probably be over, I mean, back to our cars by <clears throat> by one, I would think. Latest, yeah. yeah the, the latest. latest. <laughs> Um, yeah, because I was just curious because for Memorial Day, they shut down the road. So I didn't know if the plan was to shut down the road yeah. or if it was. Uh -uh. We're, no. we're not walking on the road. We're no. walking on the sidewalk. <clears throat> and I don't think it's going to be that many people. So like, yeah. like we did last year, we just sort of walked from the ball fields up yeah. um, on um, Beaver Dam, the, kind of the opposite direction to Lawson yeah. Green. So Ms. Green, this is not, you know, there's not. Uh, floats and bands and things like that that would require no, the road to be so, not this year I would imagine not this year not I'm saying not this year yeah I, I know a, this group we'll be talking about this next I know. we had grand aspirations but we had to like scale it down yeah, yeah it was, definitely I was got some rainbow to, roller that we have to talk to yeah. her about but other than that you know okay yeah I was just trying to understand the impact for traffic and you know residential for yeah. So getting in and out, um, that just that sort of thing. Yeah. So it's meant to be pedestrian on the sidewalk, and okay. we did discuss earlier there'll be a police detail at the crossing, um, uh, the two crossings that are hard to cross, so that oh. they will they'll have police details to to support that, and they will let you out of your driveway. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'd um, actually appreciate the uh, police escort out of the driveway. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, make a note. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you, Susanna. Um, are there any other questions about either of these? Um, are there, I don't see any other raised hands. Um, 
If not, I would entertain a motion. Um, I, I think that you could amend the rain, uh, the rain date for Pride Walk, uh, excuse me, walk because there aren't any additional people outside of this group, I think that need to review that. Um, we, the big thing will be to make sure that you can get a police detail on both days. Um, and then we oh. should. Oh, sorry, do we need, oh, the Pride, oh, both days you mean the, the rain, rain date or the, yeah. the original okay. date. Okay. And Great. then if we could amend to um, allow gym flexibility, should we um, um, approve the drive-in to um, uh, amend for a rain date? So if somebody would like to get, take a stab at, um, at <laughs> one or both of those motions. I move to approve the 2021 Situate Pride movie night on June 18th, 2021 from 8.30 p.m. to 11 p.m. and further move to authorize the town administrator um, to approve a possible for a, a rain date for that event. Moved by Mr. Goodrich, is there a second? Second by Ms. Curran. Would you care to make another motion? I think we can, can we take them together, James, or do we do them separate? We can take them together. Thank you, sir. Would you care to make another motion? Yes, I also move to approve the 2021 Citra Pride Walk on June 26, 2021 uh, from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. and further move the town administrator to schedule a rain date if needed. Second. Seconded by Ms. Curran. That'll work. That's fine. <laughs> um, so we have a motion and a second on both. We have a motion and a second on both applications. Uh, this requires a roll call vote um, and we will take them jointly. If for some reason you want yes on one and no on the other, um, please indicate when you vote. Ms. Canfield. Yes. Mr. Vignani. Yes. Ms. Conley. Yes. Ms. Curran. Yes. Mr. Goodrich. Yes. Both motions um, passed unanimously, 5-0. Good luck, guys. Thank you. Thank you. And I just want to use this last opportunity to plug <laughs> Pride sale flags. Uh, to la to tomorrow's the last day you can buy a Situate Pride flag off our website. And if you are a business, we encourage you to reach out to us so we can provide you with one and get it flown for June. So. All right. Thank you for that public yeah. service announcement. And one last, <laughs> I've also contacted the Situate Visitor Center that uh, that they're trying to get up started and, and uh, actually alerted them to all these dates and what we're doing. So again, really trying to work with the community on this and what they're doing, which I think is great to, to <clears throat> elevate uh, Situate for everyone. You know what? Thank you for bringing that, Mr. Taylor. That's a really good idea. And we should all be mindful of that as they're trying to put together the calendar. The more we can let people outside of town know about how many good things are happening inside, they'll come visit us. So thank you for uh, that. And one last thing, I'm kind of <laughs> proud. <clears throat> I keep saying I can talk. Um, this is a magazine, it's called <clears throat> Spirit. It's, <clears throat> it's an LGBT magazine for New England. It's sent to all the six New England states. And Situate, I know it's gonna be, you can't see it, Charlie, but we got a big, <laughs> you know, I got it to be opposite. We, Okay, that kind of hurts. Yeah. So you need to anyway, stop. <laughs> there's, a, there's a big write up about Situate and some right. of the events we're doing. And it basically just says go to Situate Pride to figure out what's going on. So I, I'm really happy that we got mentioned in this uh, for all the six New England states. So that's great. Well, I'm not surprised. Thank you so much for coming in, and we'll look forward to those events. Um, great. Bye, guys. Thank you. Now we're going to go back to um, our the a discussion of the second annual. Drive-in movie for 95 Creative. Jim, I see Mr. Burke has joined us. Hi, James. We skipped over you because we were ahead of schedule. Um, we will ask to unmute you. Mr. And... Burke is a co-host. He should be able to unmute himself. Mr. Okay. Burke, James Burke, do you want to do that? Do you know how to do that? Left-hand corner. Unmute. Okay. Oh, he totally knows how to do that. So the board will remember last year that there was uh, an event uh, that uh, at this location. Um, that and but this is a different. Um, it's a private group um, fundraiser. So, Mr. Burke, would you tell us what's different from last year? Uh, not a whole lot. It's uh, basically the same kind of. You know, we're. It's a. Uh, it's it's a break even at best event. Um, we are kind of. Uh, we are we. Are, Try and raise a little money 
which would be done on side sales. We'll have a little tent pitch with um, selling t-shirts and whatnot for the Ethan Lindbergh Foundation, which is, uh, is basically to help uh, parents that are going through uh, issues with their children with heart disease um, when they, so it's, we don't intend on making a whole lot off of that, but anything uh, extra would, would go into that hopper. Um, we have, uh, last year, if you remember, we did uh, Citrate Loves Local. We kind of ran the, the commercial up front uh, before the movie started and promote, trying to promote local businesses. Karen, you remember that? I <laughs> and, do. Uh, it was my movie premiere, so. <laughs> it was, you, you were, yeah, it was, we put out the red carpet for you. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, so this year, really very little is different. We'll probably run a promo in the beginning of this for the uh, young lady who works for us, um, lost her son to heart disease a, a couple of years ago. So that's why we took up this banner. And um, uh, so there'll be a, a small promo, then we'll, we'll go into a 20 minute, uh, probably a Wallace and Gromit, haven't figured it yet, but the, um, hello? Yep, oh, where'd you go? There you are. <laughs> See me? Uh, and then the, the, the movie is gonna be Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. So um, very much a family event, uh, no alcohol. Um, we'll probably have two food trucks, which are TVD. Um, and uh, Dells has agreed to come. Um, I'll, I will get a porta potty. Um, we had one last year. Didn't really, probably didn't need it, but I think it's better safe than sorry. Um, and uh, we have, I think we're gonna have 60 cars again, probably about two, you know, four, four people per car type of thing. We'll probably have 240 people, something like that. Um, if my math is correct there. <laughs> and you'll do tickets uh, the same way as the last time so that you can sell out. Okay. Yeah. The tickets will be, um, the tickets will go online. Um, and uh, that will probably happen. I don't know, maybe two to three weeks if you guys pass this for us. And, and um, yeah, it's just going to be a nice, easy family night out. Um, okay. Yeah. And that, and you did remove um, other vendors from your application, so there won't be any other sales. At, at first, we were thinking we'd have we'd invite some uh, local craft spenders, but uh, we've kind of nixed that. Yeah. Okay. And you know, you, you, the application goes to eleven thirty, but the movie's over around ten thirty. Is that good? It will be. be done. We'll be out of there by ten thirty. Yeah. Okay. Because that was a concern last year from some of the butters. You are in a yeah. residential neighborhood. Okay. Yes, and I, I did hit all the, uh, I put a, a, a notice in all the abutters mailboxes. Um, I went around and did that a couple of weeks ago, so. Okay. Um, um, sorry. Uh, nope. So does the board have any questions about this application or the uh, backup material? Head shaking. You, oh, Ms. Kerr, uh, Connolly? Yeah, so did, was there any negative neighbor reaction last year or did, the church was fine with everything. We didn't hear any complaints, but you know, just want to make sure that if there were any complaints that we address them. Yeah, um, I didn't, I, we never heard of them if there were. I think there was really positive reaction actually. A lot of the neighbors ended up coming. Um, a couple of them, I, they were driving by and we let them pull their cars in. Um, uh, at the very, at the, you know, halfway through the movie. Um, but yeah, no, we didn't hear anything. And, um, and the church, yes, there's a, you have a written, uh, yeah. you have a signed off uh, letter from uh, Father um, uh, who, uh, Bishoy, who uh, runs the church. Mm -hmm. Okay, Great. just checking. Thank you. Yeah. So I, Any... I remember checking social media around that and it was, <laughs> it was the, it was the opposite. It was, it was great or bad. Yeah. 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 Thanks. I think it, it was, it was really fun last year. I mean, we, we, you know, and, uh, we did it as kind of a, a feel good thing and, and just trying to, to break you. I mean, by the end of the day, you, you end up spending a, about, uh, 3,700 on all of the, after the, all the detail, the police detail, the, uh, you know, the movie, the, you got to license the movie, all that. And I think we brought in, 3,500. So, you know, kind of a break even event, but it's also gives us a little promotion. And I love drive. I've always loved driving. So I've got a thing for them. So what can I say? 
That's great. Um, if the yeah. board doesn't have any further questions from Mr. Burke, I will open it up to any participant that might want to ask a question. You could raise hand or um, flag me down somehow. I don't see any questions. Great. Um, then I would entertain a motion on this. Move to approve the 2021-95 Creative Situate Summer Drive-In Special Event on June 26th, 2021 from 6.30 p.m. until 11.30 p.m. Moved by Ms. Kern, is there a second? Second, second by Mr. Vignani. This matter requires a roll call vote. Ms. Canfield? Yes. Mr. Vignani? Yes. Ms. Conley? Yes. Ms. Curran? Yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes. Great. The motion carries 5-0. Thanks, James. Have a great time. We look forward to this event. Yeah, well, thank you all very much. We appreciate it. And follow Come Mr. Yeah, follow Mr. <laughs> Taylor's advice and get a hold of the Citrus Visitor Center and get it on, <laughs> yes, on the calendar. Yes, we'll I will do. I will do. Right. Thanks, everybody. And Ms. Can, Ms. Canfield, I do believe that Patsy, um, who is now Patsy Coyle there, she yep. has arrived from that. Yep. Okay. Oh, Patsy. Oh, so I was looking for uh, Altieri last name. We'll unmute you. You snuck in. Hold on, you're muted. I, I don't believe she has access to audio right now. She's been trying very, very hard. Oh, no. I, I believe she's got her video and she does not have the audio. Yeah. So, Patty, can you hear us? <laughs> uh, unfortunately, we cannot hear you at all. Um, and I understand you're having some technical problems. Um, so, we do have your application. Do you want to play with that some? And if we can get, I don't know, if somebody can help walk her through that. I, 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 can, I can reach out and find her phone number and have her call in if you so wish, and then you can move on with your meeting. Okay. Uh, Seth, Pat I will text you her number. That's fine. Pat, Patsy, okay. Patsy, 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 I'm going to call you. I'm going to call you, Patsy. Just <laughs> hang, hang tight. Hang tight. Okay. Patsy, just hang tight. All right, we're going to call you and try to get you on through a telephone call. All right. Meanwhile, we're going to go on. Don Knapp, is he? A, yes, he's here. Uh, Don yep. is here to update us on, oh, your dark square there, um, about this year's Memorial Day, which unfortunately we won't be parading back to, by Mrs. Green's house, but you do have a plan. Yes. So um, so like with last year, we're going to uh, go ahead and do, um, in working with Seth and Sitwood TV, uh, we'll put on another virtual cer uh, ceremony. Mm -hmm. um, we're still working on, you know, I have to sit down with Seth and, and a couple of the other um, organizations, but um, just get the dates down and we'll, we'll uh, do our filming and get this together uh, and make it a, uh, you know, a uh, nice uh, video uh, ceremony like we did last year. Um, same with the flagging. Um, luckily, I, I did, uh, I learned from last year, I got in under the gun getting all our flags um, um, unlike some of the other towns and cities, they took too long, but I got us all our flags. So we're ready to go. We're going to be flagging all the veterans graves, memorials and bridges again. Um, I also got the new uh, red, white and blue uh, reefs that go on the memorial. So we got all those ready to go. I got in touch with uh, Mike uh, Breen. And so they know where, where they are and they're going to get those up uh, just like they did with the signs, getting the, the signs all ready to go. And they look great. Um, so we'll be doing that um, again this year. Um, as far as Memorial Day itself, I don't know if, um, is Joe or uh, Kim or any one of the VAC members on? Um, I see a Joe. I don't know if it's your Joe. Joe, who are we looking for? Joe. <laughs> uh, Joe Kelly, if that's oh, you. Oh, Joe Kelly, okay. Uh, yeah. Mr. Kelly, if you are the Joe, can you just take your video off or raise hand so we know it's you and we'll invite you in? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, yeah, there he is. No, nope, there he is. <laughs> it's the top. Of, there you are. There's all hey. of you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I'll, I'll let, yeah, I'll let Joe fill you in on, in, on what they're going to do Monday morning, uh, the yeah. event they have planned. Okay. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Don. Uh, good, good evening, everyone. Let's see here. Uh, looks like we're going to start about 9.30 with Rolling Thunder coming from the uh, Michael Kelly Bridge uh, with an escort, uh, situate police escort, uh, to the high school. 
Uh, they will park their bikes uh, in the parking lot and um, wait for further instructions. Uh, the police department and the fire department's honor guard and the American uh, Legion veterans uh, will uh, proceed into the uh, field. Uh, actually, they'll, yeah, they're into the field and uh, they'll stand on either side of the chair, the, uh, the po uh, police and fire. Uh, the Legion rifle squad will peel off and to the right and assemble near the uh, flag. Uh, and other Legion members and uh, veterans and Rolling Thunder and the council, council and uh, other officials uh, would take their place on the field. We'll have uh, folding chairs uh, for folks that wish to sit. Uh, the junior high school <clears throat> band and the Situate High School band uh, will uh, march into, well, excuse me, will march into the uh, football field and uh, perform uh, uh, a few patriotic songs. Uh, can you all hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> uh, and uh, let's see, the football team will be uh, there uh, it, it, uh, because it is their field and we're doing something to their field. So uh, we asked them to come and uh, they, uh, they uh, got so excited about it, they're going to bring their cheerleaders. Uh, so uh, they're going to be there also. Uh, we, I, I asked uh, Warren Flynn. Uh, to sing the national anthem. Matter of fact, uh, I heard Lauren sing uh, the national anthem about three weeks ago at Fenway Park. Mm -hmm. uh, I gave her a call and uh, she's so excited about uh, uh, singing the national anthem for us. Uh, she'll be there uh, with bells on. Uh, we're going to start the program uh, about 10 o'clock. And uh, it should end actually reading, you know, to, to introduce the chair, unveil the chair of honor. That should take about 20 minutes. Uh, there'll be a plaque, a uh, brass uh, plaque that'll be uh, in the uh, by the chair along with uh, the American flag and the uh, POW flag. Uh, we're having those uh, engraved in wood. So, uh, there's always going to be a flag, uh, two flags there at the chair. Um, and we don't have to worry about taking down flags and put, putting them away and then bringing them back out again. So they're going to be there at, at all times. Uh, we'll unveil the chair uh, uh, right around that time. Uh, the football team, we're trying to put together uh, some names of... Um, uh, veterans that were killed in action. Uh, I'm, I'm relying on Don to provide us with, with those names. And the football team, each uh, member of the football team would like to read one of those names. Uh, we'll have a rifle salute by the Legion. Uh, we're going to have uh, taps played. Um, we have, uh, we've got a hold of two professional buglers. Uh, they, uh, are part of the uh, Boston Crusaders group, and they're going to play Echo Taps for us. And that, that if you had never heard of uh, Echo Taps or ever heard Echo Taps played, it's just amazing how that works. Um, it's it's really heart wrenching. Uh, obviously, uh, we're going to uh, when we're raising the flag, because on Memorial Day the flag is half staff. And then we're going to raise the flag. And while that flag is being raised, uh, Lauren's going to sing the national anthem. Mm -hmm. We're uh, working very hard uh, with an aviation group uh, down at, uh, at the uh, Ma Mass National Guard uh, to do a flyover for us. Uh, it looks pretty good that that's going to happen. Um, and, it, and it's, it's, it's not going to be jet fighters. It's going to be uh, Black Hawk helicopters. Uh, so they'll uh, fly over. And, and again, that's not uh, sealed in stone yet, uh, but it looks pretty good. So we're working on that. Uh, 
let's see. Oh, the Lawson Tower uh, bells will be ringing. Um, we're probably not going to hear them from the football field, but uh, they're going to be ringing patriotic songs. So other parts of Situate certainly will be hearing those patriotic songs. And I think that's important on a day like that. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, one last thing. We, we've done this in the past, uh, Veterans Days, uh, where we would read the names of the veterans that passed away this current year, this past year. And uh, we're planning on doing that. And uh, in, the, in years past, we would have a bell chime from the Lawson Tower ring at, uh, at the end of each name. But obviously, we're not going to be able to hear that. So we're, we're going to uh, ring the fire bell. There's a, a, a big brass fire bell that they're going to be bringing. And we'll ring that bell after each name. Um, so that's basically it right now. <clears throat> uh, we should be wrapped up about 1130 uh, on uh, Memorial Day. Okay. Questions? Oh, a bunch. <laughs> Mr. Kelly, that's such an ambitious thing. We did not, I did not see the plans for this ahead of time. So um, the obvious question I think that the board has is I assume that our board of health and, and Mr. Bedreau and the schools have all weighed in on protocols to make sure people are yeah, safe. I have, a per, I have a permit already. I no, I mean, from a, and the permit from everybody, the, the schools. Um, yep. And how, um, how are we addressing, what's the capacity right now for outdoors, Jim? Uh, do you, I forgot, a kid changes every day. Uh, I believe it's 200 right now, but I'll double check. 200 outside, okay. It's going up the 29th too, it'll go up to 250 for outside. Okay, great. Um, this is wonderful. Plenty of room to social distance there, so. Okay. Plenty of room there, yeah. Um, terrific. Um, that should be fine. And uh, does the board have any other questions about this? Thank you for putting this together. It's quite an ambitious program. I have a uh, question. Ms. Curran. Yes, um, Mr. Kelly, thank you. Yeah. It sounds like a um, great um, event. Uh, Memorial Day is very near and dear to, I think, the Board of Selectmen, the Select Board's hearts, if you will. For, for years, it's been an opportunity for us to you know, express um, our condolences and our feelings about the day. Um, will you still be affording the board an opportunity to speak? Um, curious about what our role, if any, um, will be? Well, we're gonna, we're gonna be sending you all an invite. And uh, obviously we'd like you to say a few words if you'd like. Uh, I know you've, uh, had uh, representation from uh, your board in years past. And uh, I don't know if you have just one per person uh, say something or you can have the whole board talk, it's fine. Uh, obviously we wanna to try to keep it to a couple of minutes. Sure. And- uh, Well, John Denny, he's not on the board anymore. So it's a little- <laughs> Oh yeah, then we're, we're good to go. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, if you could give us a slot, that'd be great. And we can uh, sure. you know discuss the- That'd be great. I know it. I know it means a lot to all of us and all the work that you do. So, um, you know, we appreciate that opportunity. Okay. Any other questions or comments from Mr. Kelly about this, uh, Ms. Con Conley? Yeah, I'm just curious about Rolling Thunder. They're starting at the Kelly Bridge, which is yes. at the North River. Yes. Um, will so will traffic be stopped for them, all the way up? Uh, well, we 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 did the same thing when we. Uh, unveil the uh, purple hot signs. Uh, they uh, staged at the, at the Kelly Bridge. And um, the only thing we did was block traffic so they could all come out of that parking lot safely. Right. And then they just, uh, you know, normal right, speed, yeah. normal speed yeah. up to the, to the uh, rotary. And now they'll just continue on to the high school. So will they go from the rotary up 3A? They'll go from the they'll go from the bridge up 3A. Okay. So it may be that that you may want to stop traffic at the light at First Parish Road just so they can exit into the Right. I'm, well, I'm I'm going to leave that up to 
the, the police department. They, they're they're all over this, so all right. As I'm sure they know what they need to do, um, but I'll certainly talk to them about it if you'd like. That would be nice. Thank you. Sure. Up, up, and we have the, look at that on cue. On cue, <laughs> the chief chief of police pops in. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> um, Mark, do you want to uh, to pop? Chime in on the plans. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I think just to that point, our our primary goal would just be to make sure that there's safe passage from the bridge uh, through the rotary, through the intersection at First Parish, and then you know ending up at the high school. Um, and we'll do the same thing at the, at the exit point. We'll basically just stop traffic to allow them to exit safely. So, um, as Mr. Kelly indicated, it'd be a normal roll once they're kind of in a procession. They'll be able to just move up. You know, three A. I think there won't there won't be any any issues, um, but we'll make sure that they get through the intersection safely. Thank you, Chief. Any other questions or comments from the board members? No. Nope. All right. Just well, thank you. Yeah, yeah thank uh, you. It's, it's a lot of work. We know how much uh, preparation you've done and we look forward to honoring our veterans and to um, unveiling this, this new tribute in the, in the, um, in the uh, stadium. So I just, I, uh, if, if I could, I'd like to just say one thing about the chair. A lot of folks really don't quite understand why we're putting a chair in a football stadium. Um, well, the way it is right now, the chair of honor uh, sits at all NFL football stadiums. There's one at Gillette. You can go visit that anytime. Um, and a lot of the high schools and more so colleges have this chair of honor uh, at their stadiums. Um, I think it's a great learning experience for the children that uh, will play games at that football stadium. And I think because it's a brand, I think I know, because it's a, you know, a brand new stadium, I think this is the cherry on the top, so to speak, to finish off the, the stadium properly um, and place that chair uh, with the plaque and flags. Um, it, it'll be a wonderful, wonderful thing. The chair is already there. It's, it's in place, it's um, bolted in, uh, and it's chained off. Um, but it's, uh, it's in a very appropriate place. And, um, you know, we just finish it off with a plaque so people right. understand exactly what that chair represents. Well, that's wonderful. I don't believe that this matter requires a vote of the board because the permits <coughs> were done separately. Um, but I think I speak for the whole board that we're very um, enthusiastically supporting this this tribute and look forward to the event. So thank you, Mr. Kelly. Thank, thank you, you, Don. We look forward to another great uh, video tribute. I think it was very well received last year. So thank you to your team and to Seth for putting that together. Great. Okay. Yeah. And the other thing too, while Joe is here, I you know the the advisory council. The next thing up was the uh, donation, and I didn't know if Joe, if you wanted to. Um, uh, yes. Uh, we received a thousand dollars from the uh, Mass Fallen Heroes Fund. Um, I'm very closely associated with those folks, um, and uh, they wanted to, you know, help out um, the veterans uh, here in Situate, and um, you know, help uh, with our outreach programs. Obviously, outreach costs a little bit of money uh, to get in front of the uh, town of Situate veterans. And uh, that thousand uh, dollars going uh, going into the account, we we're allowed to spend it any way we want according to the Mass Fallen Heroes, and uh, uh, that will just add to what we have. We have uh, probably a couple of thousand dollars already, and this will add another thousand to it. So that'll take care of some expenses uh, uh, that's running this that we're doing for this uh, uh, for, uh, more than. Great. But that is a very generous donation and that does require the vote um, of the board to accept the donation. We have to do that technically. Does the board have any other questions for uh, Joe or Don about the donation or its purposes? All right, seeing none, I'll entertain a motion on that. Oh, sorry, Mark? I just said very generous. Uh, yeah. Move that the select board accept a donation of $1,000 for the Veterans Advisory Council gift fund for future benefit of the veterans of the town of Situate with gratitude. So moved by Ms. Curran. Well moved by Ms. Curran. Is there a second? 
Second. Second by Ms. Connolly. There's no further mm -hmm. discussion. This requires a roll call vote. Ms. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Vignani? Yes. Ms. Conley? Yes. Ms. Curran? Yes, sorry. Yes. <laughs> and Mr. Goodrich? Yes. Motion carries 5-0. And as, you, as Ms. Curran said, with gratitude um, for that generous donation. Um, before we go back to our interview, which hopefully we can do, um, we do have Mark Thompson, our Chief Thompson with us. And uh, there was another generous donation that um, has been received that we are requested to accept. Mark, do you wanna give the overview yeah. on that? Yes, thank you, I, I appreciate it. Um, I had received a, a very nice uh, touching letter uh, and some background information from uh, Miss Julianne White um, regarding the passing of her mother uh, back in January. Her mother was 92 years old. Uh, she had lived in Greenbush um, and particularly over the past year during COVID. Um, there were some times that uh, police and fire had responded. And uh, it was, like I said, it was a really, it was a touching note, um, but she made a generous donation to the Citrus Police Department in the amount of $500 uh, in memory of her mother. Um, so I wanted, wanted to share that it was, uh, like I said, it, it was great to get that type of feedback. Um, and she was very appreciative, particularly during a very difficult year uh, with her mother that uh, we were able to come out and help out. So uh, we'd just like to be able to, to accept the donation um, for future community service um, and policing initiatives. Further. Thank you, Chief. Yeah, we did in our backup see that note and it was it was touching. Um, so the, the woman, uh, the tribute is to Miriam Minor, I hope I have got her name spelled as uh, pronounced correctly. Um, right. And she was, uh, her backup information was extraordinary too. She was an educator, an author, and an advocate. And for her to, um, you know, to have, and her family to, pre, to call out our police department for their kindness and compassion in treating her was, is a great tribute both to the, uh, to the police department, but in, in her honor. Um, so if there aren't any other questions, this does require a motion and a vote by the board. Any other questions? I'll take a, I'll entertain a motion. Move the Board of Selectmen accept a donation of $500 for the City <laughs> Police Department gift fund for future community policing initiatives. Thank you, moved move by Mr. Vignani, seconded by Ms. Connolly. If there's no further discussion, this requires a roll call vote. Ms. Campion? Yes. Mr. Vignani? Yes. Ms. Conley? Yes. Ms. Curran? Yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes. Thank you. The motion carries 5-0 and please extend our thanks to the family. Thank and, you very much. I appreciate it. And thank you for providing her with such kindness. Um, uh, let's see, Pat, Patricia Altieri, are we, have we found her back? Have we got you back? Well, I can, I can hear you. I don't know if you can hear me. We can, we can, we can now hear you. So um, if anyone's just tuning in, we had a little technical difficulties and we've gone back to our 645 interview for the Situate Housing Authority Tenant Member Board. And I will, it, is it, it says Patsy Coyle here. How, how shall we refer to you? I like to have to, it's slash Altieri and I've always used Patsy Coyle. Okay. When they had, they had anything to do with my kids. <laughs> All right. Um, well, we did interview uh, several candidates at our last meeting. Yes, and what we asked them were three questions, which is, you know, why are you interested in this role? And what, what skills do you think you can bring to, to the board? Um, and then there's a third one, which someone's going to remind me what it is when we ask those two. So why are you interested in serving, Patsy? Well, because I've, all, I've been a social activist for 50 years, and I just feel that I can help. I, I've also um, worked all my life, you know, and I have a lot of minuscule tap, you know, things that if you put them all together, it makes a whole. <laughs> and uh, I'm interested in... in the building, these buildings and what's being done. And I'm interested in the Situate Housing Authority and how, what's going on, at, you know, Situate Housing Authority like. And of all your, and, all your bits and pieces, what, what skills in your prior work do you think will help the board in their work? Well, I was a landlord um, and uh, I know about plumbing. I, I know about... <laughs> 
you know, I just said to my grandson, in 75 years, I've never been on a job interview, and I'm <laughs> terrified. <laughs> um, I, I built my own companies rather than go on a job interview, you know, <laughs> and I can do just about anything. I'm the tenth in a family of 11, um, jack of all trades, master of none, you know. Um, how long have you well, lived I, in the, in which building are you and how long have you lived there? Oh, in Central Park. I'm in the most beautiful apartment in Situate. And um, I've been here seven years now. And I, I am interested in the town. I mean, I, my daughter lives up there. I have two grandchildren in town. And to be truthful, not many people that I talk to seem to care about what the town is doing. And when you hear about <laughs> like how much money they're paying in taxes and they don't go to a town meeting, you want to slap them. You know, um, I, I've never hit anyone in my life. I say it all the time. <laughs> yeah. I believe I, Mr. Vignani I, said almost the same words after town meeting. So, <laughs> um, uh, are there questions for uh, for our applicant? That I, I can't remember what the third question is. I apologize. <laughs> there is one that I think yeah I'd like to ask. Mm -hmm. um, Patsy, what do you hope to accomplish? Um, I I'm sure you saw the the um, the requirements. It's a five-year position, so lots of time to make some progress. Is there something that you have top of mind that you would like to accomplish? And what I'd like to do is is spend three or four months reading and seeing and learning. And I mean, everyone who comes into anything new always knows how to do it better than you do. <laughs> You know, I mean, they, they can do it faster, better, more efficiently, but they forget all the other steps. So I'm used to knowing all the steps all the way, you know. So I don't know what I can add. I've been a mother. That's the most important job. And I never ran anything at a deficit. Um, I've owned a clothing store. I had uh, apartment buildings in Boston when I was 19. Um Oh, that's Anything great. You want. That's great. If you My, give me a goal, <laughs> if you give me a goal, I'll get to it. Most people, they don't, they say, what if? No, I don't. I see the goal and I get to it. Great. You know, awesome. and, I work with, and I work with people. And is it okay with you that you would be the tenant representative? Because you will probably receive a lot of phone calls. Oh, yeah, I don't care. Oh, okay. I put them, I, believe me, I can handle them. Great. <laughs> you, know. Great. you know, most of the things they complain about, first of all, I have to remind them they're living in public housing. Ooh, they don't understand what that means, you know. And I said, you know, we got two, two maintenance men handling 600 apartments. Two or three at the most. Part, we got part time too, but I mean, they're asking them to do stuff they should do themselves. Enough. <laughs> the guys don't mind, but they they're driven crazy. You know? Well, I think you have a pretty good perspective of uh, of being a resident in the housing, so I think that is one of the things that is uh, certainly needed. Uh, what we're going to do, if the board doesn't have additional questions, Patsy, what we will do is later on in the meeting review the applicants. We are fortunate that several people have asked to serve in this role and we will have the difficult task of, of assigning that uh, position. Oh. So we will do that later tonight. You do not need to stay up with us. We'll let you know what happens tomorrow. You're welcome right, to, wait. but you don't need to. <laughs> I say, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know what I know. <laughs> you know, I can just get things done. <laughs> Great. And That's all we need. Uh, That's great to know. Any other questions for Patsy? Thank you for dealing with the technology. That was the st that was the oh. hardest part of the interview. <laughs> oh. uh, any other questions? Okay. Well, no. thank you very much, and we will we're going to continue with our agenda, and we will get to this later to tonight. Thanks a lot, sweetheart, and uh, thank you.
sorry I have been such a problem. Oh, okay. not at all. It's all, we're all figuring out as we go on this stuff. So thank you for calling all right. in. All right. All right. Thank you. All okay, right. Thank you. So um, thank you, Ian. Our next agenda item is an acceptance of a cloth donation for Widow's Walk. Ian Kelly, our golf superintendent, is here. Hi, Ian. Thank you for waiting. We're a little behind tonight. Um, you want to give the, the cliff notes on the, on the donation? We did receive the backup material and, the, and have seen, you know, an image of everything. But this was another, another very generous donation by a resident. Oh, are you unmuted? You are unmuted, but I'm not hearing you. Is anyone else hearing him? No. Uh, oh, try it again, Ann. Says, not done. Uh, all right. His microphone source just may be incorrect. I can. Uh... All right, Seth is gonna try to work some magic behind the curtain. Um, I will, um, this is an anonymous, no, it's not. Um, so the board saw in their backup while we figure out the technology um, that um, golfer and and generous resident who's 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 um, really supported our community and lots of things. Mr. M Tony Moschini has um, donated is except has suggested that we put up a clock at the Tony. Tell me if I get this right at the first in the turn at the turn. It's the first and eighth and tenth pole. I just pretended to know what I was talking about. Um, and it's a clock very similar to the others that we have throughout the building. It's, I mean, throughout the town, it's quite nice. Um, I did have an opportunity to speak to uh, Mr. Forsgaard, who's the chair of um, the Widow's Walk Golf Committee and their committee supports this, uh, nominate, uh, this uh, donation acceptance as well. And I just filled in a lot of time and let's see if we have Ian back. Oh, Ian, hate for you to wait with us and not be able to hear you. You gonna call in? Or, okay. Um, has Mr. Goodrich? I was gonna say it was it was nice to see the the, the no annual uh, fee on the maintenance of the clock. Yeah. I, really? I was sharing the concerns of. Uh, Great. Can everybody hear me? There oh, go. there you are. Hi, Ian. Hopefully, I did. A, I teed Sorry. it up. Okay. <laughs> what would you like go. to add? Yep. Uh, no, I agree. I agree. Um, so I use this company, Electric Time. They're based out of Woburn. You know, they're competitors with Verdon. And uh, the great thing is I put this clock in at my last club five years ago. And five years in, we've never had a maintenance call or anything like that. There's no maintenance fee. If there is a ish situation, they just drive right down once every five to ten years maybe. But um, there's no, you know, eight hundred dollar fee per year for maintenance. There's no need for it, and they don't feel like they need to provide it because the product's quality and doesn't have any serious breakdowns. So um, very generous of Tony. He approached me, I believe, in August of last year, and we kind of chatted it up and talked it up and devised a plan. I was waiting to see what happened with the clubhouse. Just didn't want too much, you know, commotion going on up there by the first tee. But now that that's fully gone, we can organize and, and set it up perfectly. So um, me and him did a walk through of where we wanted to put it. And the, the best location we decided was behind the 10 tee box, um, closer to the starter shack. So you can see it from the putting green, the first tee and the 10th tee as you walk around the, the clubhouse. So you can see if you're running a couple minutes behind and then head right up there. So it's a, it's a really generous clock. It's beautiful. Um, I have a picture of it of uh, the identical one that I had at Blue Hill, but I can't send that to you. Can you see me on video? Yes. Yep. Okay, cool. Let me see. Yeah. I'm not sure this is going to come. Oh, in, there, there you go. Oh, well done. Yeah. Okay. Thank you Perfect. for showing that. So that's cool. That is, uh, it'll be an identical clock to this, just instead of Blue Hill, it'll say Widow's Walk, and you'll have a plaque underneath the bottom. Um, so really excited. We're trying to class, class the golf course up. And clubhouse is part one, parking lot's part two, clock's a nice touch, we got new T signs, we're trying to get a different atmosphere over there and he helped us out big time. So that's very helpful. when and when when would it be installed, Ian? Um, we're looking somewhere around probably July, June, July. Um, like I said, we're gonna have construction at the clubhouse start in a couple of weeks. 
Mm-hmm. So I want to kind of get a game plan for that and don't want too much disruption for the golfers. Right. As I'm sure there'll be a little bit. So um, once we get that handled down for a few weeks, we'll have a good idea of what we need to do for electricity. So the only question I would have actually, which I didn't get yet, um, would be probably for Nancy is sales tax Would sales tax. He have to pay that because it's a donation to the town or, um, you know, is it tax exempt because it's a town purchase or is it not because he's not an actual employee for the town? Hmm. Could, we could give him a sales tax exemption certificate. Beautiful. Perfect. Okay. Um, awesome. Great. Um, does the board have any further questions about this very generous donation? No? No oh, generous. No. Um, yeah, we're gonna, I'm gonna write that on the list of thank yous that the board should approve. <laughs> I'll just add, Karen, that it's it's a significant clock. I mean, it's yes, you know, it's thirteen to seventeen thousand dollars. It's ten feet high, you know, and it's a beautiful antique uh, face on it. So it, very very generous. So it's gonna really sp- spruce up the, that area and be helpful for everybody coming in to get on the tee on time. Exactly. So thank you, Tony. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Golfers so like much. you, right, Tom? <laughs> um, would somebody care to make a motion? Who to accept a donation from Tony Moschini for an amount between $13,000 and $17,000 for an electric time post clock to be installed at the turn of the 1st and 10th tee box at Widow's Walk Golf Course with great gratitude. Moved by Ms. Curran. Is there a second? Second. Uh, second by Ms. Connolly. Um, no further discussion. Uh, this requires a roll call vote. Ms. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Bignani? Yes. Ms. Conley? Yes. Ms. Curran? Yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes. Motion carries gratefully for uh, 5 0, um, and I will send a note from the board to Mr. and Ms. Meaning because it really is a very generous donation. Thank you, Ian, for working with him to get that all uh, figured out. Absolutely. Thank you. Right. Thanks to Tony. <laughs> Great. Okay. Well, we will then, I'm all, we're all over the place now. So now we are up to, oh, our small event for the night, which is a presentation and discussion of the water study update. Um, we, we had a preliminary view, and I've forgotten when the date of that was a while ago. And we asked that um, Time Bond come back and really um, drill down more, not to be punny, but to drill down more into um, the discussion. So Kevin Cafferty, our DPW director is here, as well as, well as Sean Anderson, who is our uh, water su- supervisor, what's your water supervisor? Is that the correct? He's in charge of all the water. <laughs> um, so I'll turn it over to you first, Kevin, if you wanna um, tee this up, I know there'll be some screen sharing involved here. Yep, um, Sean's our water superintendent. He's doing a great job. Um, <laughs> been there, been here for a while now and and really has a good feel for the system. So a few years ago, we had gone out, one of the things that we had planned on doing is a complete water study update. And we put out our FPs and looked to do the study. And Tyne Bond was the company that we chose to do the water study with. So that being said, I will um, hand the, I'll hand it over to Mike Schrader, who's a representative from Time Bond, and he'll present you with the results. Um, and he's got some slides and some other miscellaneous stuff to put on and bring us all up to speed on the water system. Great, we appreciate it, thank you. Hi, Mike. Hi, everybody. It's uh, nice to see you all, and I hope that this is our uh, the next time we can be together in person. Um, so I need to share my screen. Um, okay. Okay. Um, can everybody see that and hear me? Okay. So this is, um, water master plan update. Um, and I'm going to preface this by saying that uh, the situate water system is very complicated uh, just due to a number of factors, intervening factors, and the lay of the land, if you will, and the way that the uh, system is set up. 
So there's a lot of data here. Uh, I'm gonna go through it at a reasonable clip. And then if you have questions or people wanna you know, back me up, we can do that. Cause I don't wanna, um, I don't wanna push you guys too far later on your agenda. <laughs> And we do, we do appreciate, I just want to jump in and just so anybody that's watching this overview, the entire study, I believe, is available online under, I think the tab is the Water Resources Committee, if I'm wrong, somebody correct me, uh, but you can find the entire study and not just the highlights presented tonight online. So sorry for the interruption, but no. just want folks to know that. And yes, so yes, we would appreciate a, a, a grand clip. Yep. So um we're going to talk about numbers and we're going to talk about wells and we're going to talk about um, uh, infrastructure. But behind this, it's important to recognize the, um, the people that behind it that make this happen. In 2020 and now 21, we're very challenging um, year due to COVID, due to a number of other things. And the, the water department has really been um, you know, say working hard is an understatement, but really making things happen and maintaining the level of service during uh, difficult times and making headway on a number of projects uh, and a number of initiatives. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. But these uh, steely-eyed gentlemen are responsible for the public safety and health, basically of the whole town, and they do a, a great job and they take it very seriously. So the overview of the study is, um, a supply evaluation, you know, I know that this is important to uh, to everybody and looking at your ability to meet future demands, um, looking at your source water quality and a prioritized capital improvement program. And then also just to put this in context that this, this study began in 2018, 2019. And so, you know, the brown water was a very hot topic at the time, not that it's not still important, but some of this content's a little dated, some of it has been updated, but I didn't want to change um, too much from what we had already published. So when we talk about uh, meeting your future demands, it's literally supply and demand. So the supply is your total available water supply, and then we compare that against your projected water use or demand. And, um, and again, this is, to the point, this was, original notes that this is based upon projections and assumptions and it's not a one-time decision or an analysis. And we've since um, made some updates in talking with the uh, water department on uh, capacities and whatnot. So when we look at the future demand, um, it's really about projecting population and then how much water those people are gonna use or that population is gonna use. And so when we do this, we look at, um, you know, we're looking for reputable source data. So we went to the two most um, authorities on planning in the east, uh, eastern part of the state, which is the Metropolitan Area Planning Council and the new UMass Donahue Institute. And those are the reports there. I want, I'm not gonna read all the words on all the slides for, for brevity, but we went and looked at the um, projections for population by those two studies. And then we also um, had discussions with the, um, the town planning department and the um, master plan team. And I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that I have <coughs> an associate with me um, somewhere here in, in Zoom world, Cynthia Castellon, who has been uh, an integral part of this the whole way through. Uh, and she will chime in as needed. So the decennial sentence, uh, census rather, shows the populations actually where it was. And then soon enough, we'll have the 2020 uh, released. And what we did was we looked at the five-year uh, American Community uh, Study um, to fill in that gap. And then we looked at the projections. We looked at Donahue, MMA PC, uh, and they break it into status quo and strong. And what we did was we took the strong and we shifted it up just to match where that uh, five-year ACS left off. So this is just about projecting the number of people. Um, and then when we look at how much water, uh, surprisingly, and I, I think this, this comes up, is the water use in town has been declining um, by an average of about 2.4% per year. 
that was in 2018. 19 and 20 have continued a um, downward trend, and actually 20 was a little bit lower even than 19. So that, you know, and that I see this all the time, this very common for water use to go down. Uh, as we know, 2016 was a drought year. And it's also, like I said, it's complicated because you have, you know, the hot summer, dry summer, uh, wet summer, and then you also have water restrictions. So it's kind of hard to, um, to always see the, the supply and demand or that cause and effect, if you will. And then over here are the projections that are based on um, that population growth and the commercial uh, development growth that was um, forecasted in the town's economic development plan. So we looked at that and we increased, um, you know, commercial for the targeted growth. Um, and then we talk about how is your water supply determined and how much do you have? It's, it's considered like the speed limit, but for water withdrawal. And where that is uh, managed is your Water Management Act permit. And those permits are specific to you to situate. Um, your permit period is 2016 to 2030. You're going to see there's a couple of bumps in it. So they, they you know, expect you to increase your needs as you go. And there's, um, again, a bunch of conditions and a bunch of uh, intervening factors that uh, impact this. And it's based on the impact of withdrawal, safe yield, uh, reasonable economic development, reasonable conservation, and stakeholder input. So when we say impact of withdrawal, when we talk about this, it's, it's taking the water out of a well or out of the reservoir without harming that, that ecosystem. So that's, you know, sort of the table ante, if you will, is, you know, what can we do to, um, you know, use our wells without basically drying up the wetlands and that kind of thing and, and impacting the, um, the bugs and the bunnies, as they say. So this chart, uh, and there's some fairly complicated charts here that, because like we said, there's just a number of uh, factors here. These bottom three bars are your incremental growth in your Water Management Act um, permit on an average annual basis. So this is um, looking at supply from annual average uh, permit requirements or permit amounts, and then uh, goes up to your safe yield without stream flow release. And just a caveat that stream flow release, it's not talking about the herring, it's talking about um, the, the basis of the permit was based on the 1960 something drought of record. And um, if you do consider releases, then that requires you to recalculate your safe yield. Um, and then starting at the top, your max day permit. So each source that you have has a, um, a total, a max day and a total annual or average annual withdrawal amount so that they're managed in two different ways. So your max day permit allows for 4.8 million gallons per day. And then we look at your permit with the largest source offline or the, the largest well in this case. So we take that one away. Um, as, a, as a means of sort of stress testing the system. Now down here is your current production capacity of 2.4 and you're gonna see that factored through all of these slides is that's based on uh, a couple factors that are fairly important. One is that you have two wells right now that are down um, or out of service that, that can be returned to service but they're waiting for, for treatment. So that's 17A and uh, 18B over up with the golf course. And so right now, those two are out of service and they've been taken out of that number, but we're gonna see that that comes back when we look at future production capacity. And the other mitigating factor is the old open bucket uh, water treatment plant, the existing plant. Um, it has, uh, it, it's, it's run its useful life uh, and is in need of replacement. We'll talk about that a little bit, but uh, more importantly is it, it has to be uh, staffed to run. And so the, the capacity of that is based on um, two running two shifts at the plant. So a 16 hour day uh, in during the peak times, which puts considerable strain on the town on the, the staff because they're really not staffed to run uh, those kind of, hours. So that's, I don't have to say it again, but it's in a lot of the slides. So 
anyway, the first thing we looked at was your average day demands. So this is, and when we say average day, I, I've seen comments and stuff. If you take the total amount that you're allowed to take out of a source on an annual basis is a million gallons, you divide that by 365 is how you get average annual or average daily demand. So that's not to say that's every day, you have high days and low days and whatnot, but the average is, is over that period. So here, what we're seeing is these gray bars were the, were the then um, historic use and the 20, 20, 20, 20, 30, 20, 40, and 2050 are projected demands. And they're broken down by other, which is, you can see there, residential, industrial, municipal. Um, the yellow is residential, which you're largely residential, um, like most towns are, and then commercial at the top. Um, so 2020 would then now become historic because we've gone through that and actually the usage was lower than this. It was um, a little bit lower, but we're comparing this against what do you have for supply? So these are demands um, and we have a number of lines here. We have the authorized withdrawal on your water management act. You can see it bumps up as it's allowed. Um, and just to, uh, I guess, simplify this, you have your current production capacity is up here. So you're meeting average day and you have the ability to meet average day with that uh, current production capacity. When we look at uh, max day, it becomes a little uh, more difficult in that you see that the current production capacity was actually below a couple of these days. And that's that's a perfect example that it, it's not, um, so on a peak day, it literally is the day because we look at the day after, the day before, that kind of thing. It won't be um, the same number. So it, it doesn't stay, the demand doesn't stay that high for you know the whole summer. It's just specific spikes. So um, when you look at this and say, well, what happened? You could have, you know, we didn't meet the demand. It's no, it's that the, um, the guys at the plant put in an extra, extra long day or they, you know, maxed everything out. So that's just sort of an anomaly with the data. Um, but you can see that going forward, that puts some pressure on going from that current production capacity to the future production capacity. And again, there's some other um, lines here, the max day with the largest well off line. These are, you know, kind of repeat. And then your max day permit capacity. So what this is saying is that, um, that you can or will be able to meet the uh, max day projected demand once everything's returned to service and um, you have full use of your resources. And that's, you know, also when we talk about wells and reservoirs, there's two parts, there's a natural component and there's a man-made component. And certain things you can replace pumps and you can replace pipes and things like that to improve performance. And then there's other parts like the, the well formations kind of, I don't want to say decay, but their production capacity goes down over time and not all of that is 100% recoverable. So we took that into um, account. And Sean Anderson can nod his head with the number of conversations we had about production capacities on a uh, weekly basis. Um, so I'm sorry, I just buzzed right by that. So we look at um, the rest of the infrastructure in the system, we look at it in terms of reliability, redundancy, which is also that concept of taking that biggest well off offline and then level of service. You know, that's, that's really where this is um, at the end of the day is providing people with, you know, safe drinking water that's um, meets their uh, expectations. So when you look at a water system, um, you have three major components, the source and the treatment distribution and storage. So for your source, you have six wells and one surface water plant. And that's, that's alone is a tricky enough uh, situation where you're blending two different kinds of water because they really are sort of different. In your distribution system, you have 122 miles of pipe, 726 hydrants and um, two booster stations. And then for storage, you have two water tanks. Um, here, we're gonna look at the treatment and the need for treatment. And this is very interesting in how the sources get used. So this, this series of graphs are just gonna go through how the different sources and the different wells are used throughout the year. So I'll just describe one and then I'll go quickly through them, but this is well number 10. Um, so it gets used 
you know, kind of throughout the year in a small uh, faction. So it's about 10% of the supply. Well, 18B, um, this was in 2018, that had since been removed from service uh, because of high manganese levels. And um, that's ready to be returned to service because uh, some improvements were made for emergency repairs to the existing water plant. And now we're working on a disposal, a backwash disposal system for that so that you can return it to service. Well, 22 uh, just gets used in the beginning of the year. Well, 19 is a heavy hitter. It functions through the year. Uh, and then, well, 10, I'm sorry, well, 22R, again, another high producer that gets used a good part of the year. And lastly, we have well 17A. Um, and this was, uh, again, at that point, well 17A wasn't able to pump directly into the system because when the manganese levels um, began to rise or were detected back, gosh, in the, uh, I wanna say at least in the 80s, after a number of studies it was decided that instead of building treatment there, which is what you need to do, they would discharge it into the pond that feeds the existing plant. And that um, really limited the use of that well. And then also uh, contributed to some other downstream uh, issues. And then what you see here at the bottom, sort of this takeaway, this is OOB. This is your surface water treatment plant. It is the backbone of your supply. And they can, you know, they tone it down in the winter or they, they back off, but you really need it. And it is the, um, the basis of the foundation for your water um, supply. And you can't really under uh, overstate its importance. So now another way we look at it, when we talked about your permit capacity um, versus your actual capacity or practical capacity. So this is each one of those sources. Like I said, they each have a limit and it's based because there are different wells and different watersheds or different pieces of the watershed. Uh, OOB functions at about 73% of its um, capacity. And you know you can see here, well, 19, 74, 47. So none of them are really hitting their total. With some rehab, we can bring um, some of that back. Um, and like I said, some of it won't come back because of just the, the fact that the, um, the well formations age. And right now, 17A and 18B are shown as zeros because um, they're offline and it's, it's uh, been a significant impact and makes it harder to run the system. So now looking at um, all production capacity with all your available sources offline, online, um, we see that 17A and 18B are still zeros. And when you add this up, this is like the opposite of a waterfall chart. You get to that 2.4 MGD, million gallons per day. And that compares to a max day demand of about 2.5. So that shows, and we're gonna see this later, that 17A, 18B, it's important. You really need all of your sources. You do not have uh, an abundance of water supply. And now when we take that largest well offline, like I said, that's sort of the stress test. And most engineer systems, I would say all, are designed to function with the biggest thing offline, the biggest pump, whatnot. And um, here you can see that you're, you know, with losing well 19, you slip even lower below that max day demand. And then with taking everything back online, the available sources back online, but OOB offline, it, it's really, uh, um, you know, you're not gonna be able to meet either demand. So not the average or the max. And this is not uh, doom and gloom, it's just saying that that's, those are very important pieces of your water infrastructure. So the conclusions to that is that you can't meet your max day without Old Oak and Bucket and the well 17A and 18B. And without OOB, all your wells are needed to meet just average day. Uh, so the bottom line is that all your sources are needed, but OOB is critical. And we have, uh, you know, some good news on that. So these, these slides are about the old plant. We talked about this um, before we've done an evaluation and, you know, the plant was constructed in 67, upgraded in 88. And one of the challenges to that plant is it is on a, um, I'm just going to go back here. It's on a very small parcel. And in order to get everything to fit and there's, you know, a ton of underground 
uh, infrastructure here too. They had to build the plant in a compact way to try to get the most out of the space that was available. And that has had, um, you know, long-term effects on its ability to run and be maintained. And it, you know, just sort of gets harder um, every year and Sean's nodding his head again. Um, and, you know, I don't have to go through this too much, but we, because it's a, it's a fait accompli, we are moving forward with the design of a new treatment plant, but it, uh, you know, the existing plant had a number of issues between age of its equipment and um, some outdated design standards that are in place there. And then the, the safety issue of having uh, chlorine gas. So bottom line is, in a, in a positive way is you've gotten your money's worth out of it and have, um, you know, gotten every bit of use out of that. So there were emergency repairs made um, that required extraordinary measures to meet the demands. And that included putting temporary treatment for that well 18B. And at the end of that, uh, it was cost more cost effective to just keep the equipment than it was to have it de-installed, uh, de but uh, taken away. So that now can be used on a seasonal basis to treat the water from 18B, which is a good producer to supplement your supply. Um, so again, these are, you know, these are the pictures from OB. Uh, and, you know, we are now going to be replacing that. So we're very excited to tell you that, um, that we're working on bringing on a, a a designer to design a new treatment plant. Um, we're looking at the, the two sites, you know, town meeting authorized the, the purchase of the alternate site uh, up on 3A, and that gives a, a, a great amount of flexibility. Um, we've laid out a whole structure of the scope to look at all your options uh, in terms of, you know, where you're going to get the source water, how you're going to dispose of things, what you're going to do here. We won't have to um, build a overly compact plant um, in the future. So it says design should start immediately, and it, and it is. So that is the um, biggest, happiest news that, that we have. You're going to get a, a new, um, I hate to use the word state of the art, but a, a new modern plant that's designed for that. There's also, you know, we've talked a lot about manganese and where it comes from. It also comes from the surface water, partly because well 17A has been discharging into that pond, or not discharging, but supplying the pond for the last 20 years. And there's also natural processes that over time um, build up manganese. And the existing plants not, it was never intended to treat that and the new one will. So that, um, is good news. And then the other good news is that uh, we haven't seen any PFAS in your water, which is great. Storage, talk about your two water tanks. Um, this is a storage analysis that we do. You look at your, um, you know, your fire flow. Um, storage tanks are all about pressure and the pressure is related to height. So kind of a funny way to think about it is the, the water at the bottom is really just a cushion, a support to get that other water up high enough to give you the pressure you need. So that's what we look at is this, this um, middle part, which is for firefighting. And then the top is your equalization volume. And that's how, you know, it goes from the peak demand when everybody gets up on Saturday and starts doing laundry and take a showers, the tanks are the ones that supply the source. Um, your challenge with those is that they're both really old. And um, as we tried a couple of years back, we were gonna rehabilitate Maple Street and, um, you know, the water department isn't able to function with just one tank. And unfortunately, tank painting season is peak summer season too. So the, um, the plan going forward will be to install one new tank, uh, the same size as Creelman. And then once that's online, you'll be able to take uh, Maple Street offline, paint it, rehab it, you know, restore it to new condition. And then um, you can, at that point, you can uh, take Creelman tank offline um, and abandon it or, you know, disassemble it as, as, uh, as you like. 
So that will then give you two tanks that um, can provide the same amount of storage. Because ironically, you don't want too much storage either because that gets into an age issue and you start to get um, undesirable effects from that. And then the other big part is your distribution system. There's um, the town has done a ton of work and spent a lot of money on infrastructure over time. You replaced all of the cast iron um, pipe in your town, the, the old rusty cast iron pipe. And I've been doing this for 35 years and I've never seen another town that replaced all of their cast iron pipe. So that is good. And that's also allowed you to start uh, flushing, which I'll talk about in a second. But the other part of it is to now start um, going after the, uh, the uh, asbestos cement pipe and some old galvanized steel pipe. There's a contract right now that started that's going to get rid of that small diameter pipe, um, fix some of the hydrants on dead end streets and that kind of thing. And then, you know, going in forward, um, you know, just keep moving. The, the most recent project that's out is. Uh, uh, distribution system improvements 4A, and it's going to keep going five, six, seven. And there's a certain amount of construction you can do a year um, before you start going the other way. And people are complaining because they can't get around town, everything's torn up. And that also puts a pretty big demand on uh, Sean's guys because they, they do have to um, be pretty involved with construction. So um, you notice in that picture, none of his guys are overweight because they're all running around all the time. <laughs> So the brown water, um, you know, we've talked about this a little bit. Um, and the, the great thing here is we did the ice picking before. That was immensely helpful. And it gets the stuff that's stuck in the bigger pipes that it's hard to get the water flowing fast enough to just flush it. And then, um, oops, they also started unidirectional flushing. And before, back when you had this, you know, rusty, crusty cast iron pipe when you flush you really get the water going fast and it um you can have breaks and the 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 crew back then was just afraid of doing that so um when mark came in the new uh distribution form and it was right when they started uh the unidirectional flushing program and that is um designed using a hydraulic model and it consists of these little sections of pipe called sequences. And it's, you know, they shut down valves to isolate the pipe. They open a, a hydrant, they record data, they watch it flow, all this stuff. Um, and, you know, each one of them is a fair amount of work. There's 500 sequences, at least 500 sequences in the program. And they've done it uh, three times now. So they're doing that twi oh. twice a year. Um, so I, you know... He must have wore out a pair of boots, but it's a great way for someone coming into the system. He basically walked almost every mile of pipe that you have, and they they got to see, you know, some valves that were closed and whatever. And that's that's made a big difference too, and that's a great uh, best practice. Um, but it is it is labor intensive, and you know it does stir up stuff. Um, but that's uh, you know a really good thing, and it's a part of what makes it work so I can't see what time it is but I that is my this is my question slide so uh, great Mike you, you're, you're almost we, we have now negative four minutes to cover all of this but we will we'll certainly make time for this because um, okay. so much work uh, Kevin and Sean would you like to add anything before I'm sure there are some questions from um, our folks Kevin Sean no, I, I mean, the only thing is, um, you know, we were we were pushing Mike on time because, as he said, he could talk hours and hours about it <laughs> and we could respond with him hours and hours. Um, we've been working. Andrew's been involved with us. We've been working on design of selection, the design of selection process. Um, we've gone out. We've toured a couple different plants and seen the good things and the bad things of some of the different designers. Um, you know, we're we're pushing ahead and. You know, the other day we were talking to a couple other people in the water um, business and they were kind of talking about the sweet spot of how much a town should be doing for water lines at a time. And 
you know, in a yearly basis, all of them were saying the most they would ever do is probably three to three and a half miles. And, you know, on a regular basis with Situate, we push five, even six miles of pipes, you know, on the replacement process. So um, it, it has been, we've been very aggressive and it's it's been difficult, but hopefully we start, you know, seeing the benefit of this. And I can't say enough with Sean and his guys, they do a great job. Absolutely. Um, Mike, if you could stop sharing at this point so we can, I, I can only see a couple of people. Yep. Thank you. Well, what, uh, just to add on what Kevin said, what part I thought was great is that um, we brought, uh, well, Sean Anderson obviously came up to tour the plants too, but he brought his chief operator uh, to see firsthand what, you know, these new plants look like and just pick out some features that he liked or didn't like. And that was a really good, um, I think, exposure and experience for for everybody yeah you're right the team has done amazing work with you know bubble gum and duct tape for the plant and it's uh i've been down there myself many times just in awe of how resourceful our engineers are to keep the plant going so um please let them know that we we do acknowledge that um i had a ton of questions but i wanted to open up to the board and see if you somebody else wanted to start um, anyone first, Ms. Connolly? Um, so are we looking for new wells or looking for, uh, this is, there was a recent book written by an, a resident about the water troubles in Situate for the past hundred years. And it seems as though we've been looking for new wells. We've been looking for a place for another reservoir. I'm just wondering, is that, are those, potential solutions or, um, or do we have to deal with what we have? No, we've been, we've been aggressively looking at other wells. One of the things we've been working on, which we brought up at the last town meeting is the Dolan well field, which is off Hollett Street and Country Way. Um, I'm hoping within the next two weeks, we will actually submit our permit to the DEP requesting that we go forward and use that well. The reason we requested the funds is so that there'd be no holdup. We wouldn't have to wait till another town meeting to complete the design and maybe even go out to construction. I think we asked for like $3.6 million to get that going forward. There are a couple of questions on it, um, but we have been actively looking at, at, you know, looking at locations and wells. And this was actually a well that was permitted, I, I want to say in the 80s by the town, but they never went forward with it, which is unfortunate because now we've spent two years going through the permitting and testing phase in order to get this where we are, where if it was permitted, we could just start withdrawing water from it. Although you did ask Kevin, you held up the permit from the last time, said, can I use this? <laughs> I tried. Yeah, you did try. Thank you for your efforts. Thank you. Any other questions, Ms. Connolly? No, nope. uh, Mr. Goodrich? To, to piggyback up to on that there's i think in the capital prioritization uh there's like some what west end well investigation it was like a couple of years out is that how important do we still see that to look in the west end area uh and investigate yeah that's that's going to be huge for us in the future we're always looking for different well sources because ideally we would like to be able to run on wells at certain times and rest certain wells. And we just don't have that capacity with the wells that we have. Um, so obviously by getting different sources and being able to switch the water around, it would be great. But, you know, um, we can only do so much at a time in the, in the biggest thing now that we see in the future is by getting Dolan well on that, or it's actually a well field, it's multiple wells that will allow us flexibility and get that constructed. And then as we're making improvements, continue on and look in the West End and see what we can do. Mr. Goodrich. Sean, anything to add on that? Did I miss anything, Sean? Sorry, I'm talking right over you. No, that's okay. I think you hit everything right there. Andrew, you had follow yeah, up? I, guess I just wanna back up quick for a second and just say that this, it's a, this whole document, it's a, just say thank you, because it's a great roadmap for a lot of different kind of areas. Um, one question on the population study, uh, and some of this, it's not, um, but it's maybe just new information um, and how that may kind of impact. I mean, now we know with some of these 40B projects, we're now looking at possibly six, a total of around 600 
new units, um, which I don't think was information we knew about, plus the 300 uh, normal residential perm uh, permitted units. So we're looking at close to 900 new units in town over the next four, five, six years, which is a little different than what the, um, the Donahue projections and other projections are there. And, and then coupled with that, my only other comment would be is whether or not, I mean, typically our snowbirds and seasonal folks aren't always population, but they're coming in for that peak demand. And I say all of that, um, knowing now with these extra projects, uh, over 600, does that, do we have any more concern on demand and that max day, knowing that some of our population could be accelerated um, immensely and kind of what that means for you know, the water pressure, for just everything at large? I, I'm rambling, but I hope that makes sense. I don't know if that's for Kevin or, or, or Mike, but. Mike, I'll, I'll let you respond to that because you, you did do the population study and I thought, I know you had met with the master plan as well as the planner to get future uh, projects online. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I can help Mike uh, chime in here. This is Cynthia with Time Bond. I, I also helped Mike out on that. We did reach out to the planning office back in January of 2020, and we accounted in our projections for a lot of developments that were in the works or talks. Um, in total, we came up with about 660 units from now through 2030 that were in discussion. Um, we'd have to look further to see if that includes the ones you're talking about or if there are new ones on the horizon that might need to be uh, yeah, added the, in there. Yeah, the, I mean, these are new. We're talking in the last month or so okay. that this news has come out, extra 300, 300 or so. Oh, we knew about that before. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm just, but it does it's not, the immediacy is what I uh, right. I said that to so to paraphrase that was exactly my question is we need to be comfortable that we may have projected um, use identified, but are we going to be able to if that accelerates, are we going to be able to meet the demand given the time lead time in expanding our water supply and just figuring out that delta um, I think is going to be very urgent. Because uh, unfortunately, we don't have much say. Um, well, I guess that's the question is, how much say do we have? Should we reach a point where we just don't think we have the de demand, uh, supply? Kevin? <laughs> He's frozen. He's frozen. Um, I think he did that on purpose. <laughs> handle the... Uh, I'll let Mike respond. Uh, Mike Schrader is part of the study, and then I can, I can add on to that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a moving target, um, between the population projections and the new source development that we're talking about. And, um, we've had several discussions about, you know, how to manage this resource going forward in terms of, uh, projecting supply and projecting the population increase and the demand increase. And, um, uh, I don't know what I call you, Madam Chair. You, you were just kind of getting around is the moratorium. And I remember, Kevin, we talked about that four or five years ago. Um, and it's, it's uh, I don't, I'm not going to speak off my thing. This is more, I think, Jim's, uh, Jim Boudreaux's vein, but the it's difficult to just declare a moratorium. You know, you have to have um, a lot of uh, pieces in place to, to effectively do that. And then it also limits you in other ways. So we're looking at, you know, that Dolan well field coming online. We have to see if that does actually net you more use because it's in the same um, watershed. The West End, I believe was not, and that's outside of that. So that would help. Um, and then just to revisit with the state to see if you can get more water, um, which is you know part of the process. 
but yet you're already in a stress space. And so I think the road that I've seen Citroën on is more focused on conservation, on water use. I know they're talking about the um, um, multimetering for mm -hmm. multi residential. I know that that's, that's a big thing. So uh, yeah, I mean, there's not, I can't say definitively yes or no right now that yes, you can accommodate the 300 units you just found out about, but it's worth um, keeping an eye on it. This is, this is unfortunately or fortunately, it's not a set it and forget it thing. It's, you know, stuff changes. Uh, once you get your uh, new water treatment plant will be able to produce the capacity that it's allowed to, it's just more than twice of what you're doing now. Right, that was one thing I wanted to just clarify about. So the plant that's being contemplated design now, how will that in, like it, how will that impact our capacity? I mean, will we be able to create uh, to do to produce that's, more water from it? You, that's definitely... an important. Oh, sorry, Mike. Oh no, go ahead, Sean. I didn't see you. Um, I was going to comment on that. Actually, that's an important piece of the puzzle, um, as you can see from the slides. <laughs> more than 25% of the capacity of Old Oak and Bucket is, is not being used currently. And a new plant would allow us to utilize that capacity. Um, and I also read that um, history study of uh, the town of Situate. And it's interesting because I'm greatly looking forward to doing the same thing that they did many, many years ago. And that's to run the surface water treatment plant whenever we're in a surplus of water and rest our well sources for when we need them in the summer. Um, I'm not able to do that right now because we get better water quality from our wells than we can get from our, our treatment plant, um, mm -hmm. unfortunately. So when we have a new surface water treatment plant that's capable of producing more water at a better quality, I intend to run it a lot more often and give our wells a chance to rebound and thereby um, having more available in the summertime. Great. Um, another non-supply non is you mentioned, Mike, you said there's no PFAS or, or what, is that accurate or is it just that what you've tested is below the standards, current standards? So I'll, I can, um, I can step in, in on that. Oops, Oops, sure, I'm going to I'm going to jump over and clarify two things. Sorry, okay. the Dolan Wellfield is a different um, source water from our other wells. It's actually a perched um, well source that that comes in there that um, we've been working with Weston Sampson. Mike is somewhat familiar with it, but he's not super familiar with it. Um, my understanding is it is not the same um, aquifer source as our other wells. Um, PFAS, Sean and his guys has start, have started testing and did their first rounds of PFAS testing, which you mentioned the word PFAS to any water supplier and he immediately breaks out in a sweat yeah. because it reads into the parts per trillion. Um, and the upper limit, I believe, is 20 parts per trillion, which is just an amazing low amount um, that you would have to treat for. We've treated all of our sources and I, in you know, our original rounds of tests, we have to do a second round of tests. Um, we did not exceed the threshold limit. It's the one time I can say citrate water doesn't have something in it that, you know, you know, we always have iron manganese in it, but we, we didn't find any PFAS. So we, we were thrilled on that so far. So John, I cut you off and carry on from there. Sorry. No, that's okay. Um, it, it's not that we didn't find any, um, but we are well below the MCL, um, they did found um, DTEX, <clears throat> very minor DTEX. And just so you know, just how um, incredibly, you know, um, you know, small the parts per trillion, just incredibly difficult it is to sample. There's actual courses or, or short instruction videos that you, you, you need to take before you do the sampling. Um, they don't want you to use fabric softener on the clothing that you wear the day that you do PFAS sampling. Uh, <sighs> There's, there's, you know, there's a long list of, of, of items that you have to be careful of that you, you're not wearing the day that you do PFAS sampling. You have to put night, wash your hands and put nitro gloves on. Um, each sample site, you have a, a, a blank is what it's called. It's a, a, a sample that's sent from the lab that has no PFAS in it. 
And at the site, you have to open up that sample bottle, take another bottle that's empty and pour it from one bottle into the other. And that's, um, that's your, 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 your sample that's gonna tell them if you get a detect and then they test that water and they get a detect, it came from the environment. It's not in the water, it came from wow. you know, something you were doing. So um, as Kevin said, our, our you know, 20 is the MCL, parts per trillion, 10 is where they'd like to see you below. We're below even the 10 um, so far, but we're on the first round of sampling and we have another round to go. Great. Um, more questions for our experts on the water. Mr. Bignani? Sure, thank you. Uh, hey Mike, this uh, presentation is very similar to the one that we did in the library a couple of years ago. Yes. Where, where we talked about all this stuff. And um, what is, what are we supposed to take away from this? Because the, the presentation in the library, I believe we took away that, you know, our, our infrastructure needs repair, right? Mm -hmm. And we need the, the water treatment plan has run its useful life and it doesn't have redundancy and it can't go at full capacity and we rely on it a lot, which you said isn't, isn't completely uncommon with other communities. Um, I look at some of the charts and I see that we have water you know we're not we're not under we, we can supply the demand that's needed here what, what is the like what chart are we supposed to look at that's what are you trying to tell us you know, are, are you saying that we don't have enough water because that's not what came out of the the meeting a couple of years ago um other than we always have to do what we're doing which is working towards improving our system you know literally upgrading every component of it because we hadn't done it for decades and decades and decades. You know, the, the tanks, the pipes, the, the treatment plant, and looking for new sources of, of water. But what's, what, what's the major point there? these things should come across and show me which one of these graphs I should be looking at and getting some information from. I mean, clearly if we shut off the water treatment plant and our biggest well, then we don't have water for our community but i think that's probably unrealistic and then andrew brought up a good point that there's our population almost doubles in the summer so we do have peaks and you know both of the pritchards at that meeting brought up you know that we really have to plan for that extreme event and I, the averaging of stuff doesn't really show us the extreme event um so summarize Summarize for me what I should be getting out of this. So, yes, uh, you're correct on the first part that you need to continue to invest um, in the water system. The, you know, moving forward with OOB was a big step. Uh, that's going to make a big difference in terms of the, um, the water supply. Yes, you know, the, the graph that we showed that shows the, um, the total capacity and then the, the max day, it shows that you have enough water based on those estimates. And then, you know, the other thing that's, that's challenging here is, like we just heard, there's new considerable size developments happening uh, on a regular basis. And I think that the next step is, and this has been um, discussed by the water uh, resources committee is how to manage that going forward and what you know I think to your point how do you keep your eye on the the supply so Kevin mentioned that you know they're bringing that Dolan well online um, which has you know sort of during the study it was out there and we had some preliminary um, numbers but until you get a better feel for where that's actually going to go it's hard to estimate the impact on um, on your supply and the ability to continue to, to provide that. So, um, you know, I, this is never going to end as far as just being you're all set. You know, because you get the you get in the growth pressure, which is exceeding what the projections were uh, in your normal. Um, you know, seasonal challenges and weather challenges and new droughts. Uh, and there's discussions about the state 
going to manage the other part of your water, which is the not your permitted part, but your registered part, because they're concerned about uh, continuing droughts. So, um, you know, it's, it's in some way, it's a living thing. You know, you can continue to manage um, supply against demand. And can I, I just I, say, okay. I, 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 Go I, was ahead, just, I was just gonna chime in for your max day projections. Um, right now, what we're projecting for max day is in part taking into account your seasonal increase in usage because we look at your historical trends for how your max days, which occur in the summer when your seasonal population comes up, we look at how those max days compare to your average demand throughout the year. And we use that same uh, peaking factor to look at your projected demands. So that takes it into account for now, but that's not to say, like Mike said, it, it's a living thing. If if your seasonal population starts to go up even further as people, you know, start to look for more entertainment or start going back out there or more people start uh, visiting, certainly those peaking factors can can start moving upwards. Um, but right now you're almost, almost at a 2% peaking factor, meaning that on a max day, your water usage is twice what it is on an average day. Mm -hmm. So again, I don't, I didn't hear what I was hoping to hear, not one way or the other. I still don't know what the answer is. But if I'm looking at one of your charts here, I see future production capacity, 4.36 million gallons. The current production capacity is 2.4. Then I look at some other charts that show where we are and that our yields are way above it. So I think we all agree that we have to continue to invest in this as we are. We've invested probably almost when all said and done, a hundred million dollars, mm -hmm. you know, into our into our infrastructure. But I just don't want the public. I I, I want to understand how is there a dire strait for water supply right now, or is this just a course that we have to be on because of the future and because of the cleanliness of our water and because of upgrading systems and all that sort of stuff? I just don't get the sense that we don't have water right now by some of these charts. And that's, that's what I'm trying to understand. And I don't know if it's yes or no. If I Sean? could jump yeah. in for a second. Um, one thing has changed since the last time we had the public presentation is um, just my sense of getting a better understanding of the, the, the system in situate. Now having been here five years and through two major droughts in the town of situate, um, I realized that I can't look at what a well's average capacity is um, or what the well is, you know, the potential of a well is. I have to look at what the hard facts are realistically. What can I get from my wells um, during a drought? So that's what these numbers, these harsh numbers are showing. The harsh numbers are showing the fact that last year, um, you know, it, just before a town meeting, a special town meeting, I had to go before um, all of you folks and ask to go into a full water ban, um, not because we were in a drought yet, but because demand was so high. Um, demand was so high because we were in, the, in the, 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 you know, beginning to middle stages of a pandemic. More people were working from home. More people were doing work outside in their yards. Um, the demand was so great that I had to come before you folks and ask to go into a full water ban because my chief operator came to me and said, Sean, we can't sustain this. We can't keep running the plant as hard as we're running it. Um, and I had to take him you know, for his word and, and look at the facts. And then he and I both went up to Kevin and started the ball rolling to go before you folks. So that's without 17 or 18 online. 17 and 18 coming online are going to make a really big difference. Um, the new plant is going to be a world of difference when that comes online as well. So I'm not, I'm not trying to say, you know, it's, you know, doom and gloom. I'm just saying that the life that I'm currently living in is very restricted. Um, it's, it's going to get better and it's going to get better soon. Um, but 
it is tight. It is very tight right now. Yeah, and that's what that's what I think we all took from it back then. That we are really trying to um, be able to produce for the extreme events. A, a, a the peak of a drought season in a overusing time frame, you know, because of COVID or whatever. Um, and that's what you know. Unfortunately, in the water system, you can't make a, a turn on a dime, right? It takes a long time to build a new system. It takes a long time to get a new well approved. Um, and those are the steps that we're making now. Um, but it is to deal with the extreme events, right? If there's no drought, then we're doing good. Not to say that we can't, not to say that we don't have to prepare for those droughts because we do, but I just want to make sure everybody knows that we're on that right path of dealing with those extreme events. Yes. And under normal capacity that we're actually looking okay. If, if that's true, if that's. Yes. Yes. It was, um, I believe it was two years ago that we were still um, overflowing um, at the reservoir come July 1. We had so much rain that we went into July with an absolute full reservoir. So, um, you know, in, if you get to that point, if you get to July 1st with a full reservoir, that means people haven't really needed to water at all, at the, you know, until that point. And you've almost already made it, you know, for the summer. Um, it's just the peak, the peak times are the hardest. Okay, so what I said is accurate, and it was a question, not a statement, because I don't know. So, so we're taking all the steps to deal with the extreme situations, but in a normal situation, we have demand. We have the supply to to deal with our demand, and of course, the the extreme situations are now not every twenty years; they're every every three years or whatever every, you know it's every seems. three to five years yes we do have it and yes we're doing the things to make it better in the immediate future and the long-term future okay thank you uh mr goodrich uh, no i just want to i mean tony the, the way i kind of i kind of look at it it's almost like trying to put out a fire with the dixie cup there's enough water there but the inability from some of the infrastructure is just so difficult and i could say what i got from it and i is that the capital plan outline of all the, just like you said, that it's not just that the water's not there, but we have to continue kind of down that path. And correct me if I'm wrong, Sean and Kevin, um, that if we do those things, things like the recharging of the, um, of those well sources is gonna go a huge way to do that. So it's like, we're kind of nearing the finish line and we're gonna get there so we're not, but not that fire with the Dixie cop, we're able to, to kind of use all those sources. But I, I, I understand your, um, where you're coming from, but that's at least what I was able to get from it, kind of that outline going forward. So just want to put it up there. Mara, did you have your hand up? No, okay. Board, um, yeah, so my takeaway is we've got some hands up and we will get to you um, next uh, if the board doesn't have any questions. But, you know, to me, I think, Tony, you, you absolutely nailed, the, um, nailed this, is that, you know, we have a plan that is, um, in, uh, you know, 100 million already spent and a plan to address these issues as we go. Um, and so that the board should, I think the takeaway is we stay the course. <laughs> Um, it's a good team. And we work with, um, as we have been, we work with improving conservation in the meantime. And as Mike said, we have moving targets. So we got we to gotta reassess when we get more facts on the ground. You know, if, if the 40B gets permanent, we need to, you know, sit down with Sean and Kevin and Mike and, and, and see what needs to be done to address those situations. Um, I will remind the board that we did put our concerns about the use into the 40B um, um, letters to mass housing. Will it make an impact? We don't know, but we are on the record for our concerns about that acceleration of, of use. Um, if the board doesn't have any other questions or comments, I would like to open it up. Poor Freya's had her hand up for an hour and a half already. So we'll start with Freya, who is a member of our water resources group. And then we'll go to our chair, Becky. And it goes with the two hands open. Freya, Hi, there you. Hi, Freya. Thank you for your patience. Thank you. Um, I guess do you, do you, I guess you have to say your name and address pro properly for the record. Yes, um, Freya Schlegel, nine Westgate Lane. Um, and I just wanted to point out that even though our reservoir is 
three point something inches overflowing, we are in a drought in the entire southeastern region. Mm -hmm. So we need to conserve now. Um, my question was, um, Sean was just saying that we're not, are we not using the reservoir at all right now for our, our needs? Because it sounds like there's 3.3 right. so inches of rain going out to sea right now. Correct. We use the water that's spilling over naturally. We're not that we have a the ability to open a gate valve to release the reservoir down to old oak and bucket when we need it. Um, in times of heavy rainfall, like we've been having, it spills over, and we don't need to do that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right, Fred. You good? Okay. Um, well, I just wanted to say that if anyone's watching, we're doing a campaign with the water resources. We're looking for videos um, for people's conservation efforts. We'd love to see what you're doing at home, whether it's, um, you know, saving water from your pets bowls to feed your plants or whatever it is. We really want the community input. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. Thanks for taking care of, uh, for taking the lead on that project. Um, Becky uh, Malmut is our chair of Water Resources. Hi, Becky. Hi. Oh, where'd you go? There you went. Okay. Hi. I just have a few things I'm just gonna kind of touch upon. Um, the first is we actually, as of I think Friday, we are no longer in a drought, which is wonderful. Oh. Um, but that doesn't mean we're in the clear from a, an outdoor water use restriction perspective or we're in the clear from a resource perspective in town. Um, you know, the last couple of years we've gone into total water bans having nothing to do with the amount of water or not but everything to do with the amount of water but also having to do with our infrastructure. So one of my biggest, I guess, items I'd like to highlight and, um, you know, Mike, I don't know if you can respond to this is, you know, our max day demand is 2.5, our production capacity is 2.4, but for how long? You know, that's the big question. How long can our infrastructure pump 2.4? I know we did, I remember Sean used to have an answer of two weeks and we surpassed that last year. So that was great. Um, but, you know, I really think we need to look at that. I think we need to also look at the short term, um, shorter term. 17A doesn't go, won't be online this season. Hopefully 18B will be, but 17A won't be. So how do we get through this year if we have some other struggles? Um, and the water treatment plant won't be built for another four years. So what do we do in the interim to manage demand beyond just conservation? I mean, we're, I think we do a great job with outreach. We're doing a much better job this year. We've got some new policies and, and programs in place that should be helpful, but I really think we need to keep this in our minds when we're looking at new developments, um, permitting, things of that nature. Um, and then the last piece, actually, before I get to the last piece, I do wanna say, Mike, this report's fantastic. Um, you guys did a really good job, Mike and Cynthia. It's come a long way from where it was a year ago. Um, it's got a lot of great data in there. And like you said, it's this living, breathing document that. Um, we'll just continue to need to put work into, but I think this is really helpful. And the town and the select board and the water commissioners have done a lot to um, ensure that long-term we're gonna be able to solve some of these problems. And again, I'm just focusing on the short-term. So my last item is, um, you know, when we first started to talk about this master plan, one of the things we talked about was having a tool, having Ty and Bond provide a tool to the town that would allow us to really understand what kind of development we can allow under certain circumstances. So, and actually this is a conversation that I started I think in 2015, so that everybody in town is on the same wavelength of we have this many people using this much water, we can produce this much this year, this much next year. If we bring in this 200, 100 unit, 35 unit development, boop, 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 in theory, what can we support this? As opposed to it just being kind of, Maybe, I don't know, I think, and I shouldn't say that, as opposed to it being, <laughs> you know, conversations where we're not really seeing numbers. So I just think that tool would be so useful. I think residents would appreciate it. I think it would answer a lot of questions that people have um, for people who aren't reading the report, watching these presentations, seeing all the good work that is done. So that I think would be a really essential deliverable um, that should be added to the report. Okay, thanks. Um, Mike, do you wanna just quickly talk about the, uh, uh, we're in, the um, what can we, how long can we sustain max and under the current system? That's a really good question. Or Sean? Yeah. 
You know, can I take a stab at it? Or, or, you oh, know, all right, wanna, Kevin. <laughs> don't want to try. I just couldn't help. There was a there was a time when nobody was talking, um, and I figured I had to get involved. Um, remember, you know, we're in a water band right now, and and we have three and a half inches over the reservoir. That's by our state permit. We have to go into a water band at the beginning of the month, and that goes on for the year. So a lot of what that tool would be is you'd be looking at it with the town of Situate in worst case scenario, heavy duty restrictions, complete water restrictions. You can't water your lawn. You can't wash your car. You can't do that stuff. And, and when you go by that aspect, we, we do have enough water. It just means that that would be kicking in a lot sooner and it would be more draconian. Um, you know, what are we, what are we doing this year? Well, 18 is, you know, in, Hopefully soon we're going to contract. We've got that out for the um, contractor to start going after that work as soon as possible. Got materials and everything else he'll have to order, um, but that's going in. So it, it's tricky, it, and it all depends on what the standards. You know, of, I understand 100% what you're saying, Becky. But you know, for Mike to put that tool together, that's going to be probably in the most um, draconian water aspects that, that we have as a whole for the town where where there wouldn't be any watering. So it's tricky how to how to word it. Does does that make sense? Because the state's not going to look at it and say, oh sure, situate, we're going to let you stop, you know, letting new development come in. They're going to say, you know, if they ever came in and had to take this over, um, my conversations with Jim on this is is they're going to institute the strictest, no watering your lawn, no outdoor watering, you know, complete outdoor water bins, water for is no for anything. And when you go to those circumstances, we've got plenty of water. It just, you know, you lose the water for um, some of the uses that, that we enjoy now. Right. No, I get that. I'll let and somebody else add on to that if they'd like to. And the other thing that they'll add too are all of a lot of the proactive policies that we're trying to implement right now. You know, water offsets, re, like all of that stuff, right? So I, I definitely know we're working towards it. I just think, and I, I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm not saying one way or the other to not build, but I just think to have a tool where we can understand we've got this delta of 1.5 and 1.8 and across the, the annual average. We've got this delta of 2.5 and 2.4, you know, how much, how much can we close that gap before this, the state does need to intercede or where we need to intercede and do something else beyond what we're doing? I'm not quite sure what that would be at this point, but I guess I just think it might be a helpful tool for, for people and residents to feel better about new development as it comes in. Okay. I, I agree. Yeah, if I could just to, to put a number on it, if you recall, when we put the total water bin on last year, and Sean will correct me, I think our water usage dropped around a half a million gallons a day. Right. Half a million gallons a day. People not watering Drops lawns. Telling people you couldn't water your lawns, and and they still did. I mean, <laughs> we caught them. We, we talked about the the, the one house that <coughs> we paid him a hundred dollars a day for a whole month because uh, he put more money into his lawn than he was going to get fined. So he, they didn't care at that point. Mm -hmm. But when you put on that water bin, and as Kevin said, before you can say no one can hook up to the water system. The state's going to give you a list 10 pages long saying you need to do all these things first. Right. And then when you get done those, if there's still a problem, then we'll talk about no hookups. But uh, as, as Kevin said, they'd say, no, you put the water band on in June. doesn't matter how much water you have. You can't water in June. You just start it. But half a million gallons of, of drinkable water a day, our demand went down. We said you can't put it on your lawns anymore. That, mm -hmm. That's a lot, a lot of water. Okay. Right. And then I'm what, not, like I'm saying, I'm not saying moratorium. I'm not, I didn't mention those words. I didn't <laughs> develop. I'm just, I just think this tool is useful <laughs> for, for the education of residents. I think it would be yeah. helpful for everybody to be on the same page. Not even residents, it would be helpful for all the different boards and commissions to be on the yeah. same page about what the system really looks like. Um, yeah. Great. Well, I'm glad, glad, I mean, this is obviously one of the most important issues in our community. So thank you for taking the time to, you know, break it down for us, Becky. Thank you so much for your work and your committee's work. One piece you alluded to that we haven't really mentioned is, is that whole, what the board can do is the policy side. Mm -hmm. So, you know, getting low flow toilets, coming up with a rebate program as was uh, 
approved a town meeting or you know citizens petition at town meeting and and doing the um, the bylaw revisions. They're wonky stuff behind the scenes, but they will also make an impact on on the future. So if we try to, we're gonna we're gonna need all the tools in the toolbox for sure. I think is the biggest takeaway. Um, so maybe we can, you know, down the road we can think of a way to to synthesize this so that we can update the public and they don't have to listen to an hour of information and make it so that we can encourage folks to definitely comply with the uh, the restrictions and that we're gonna need. Um, I don't want to rush this conversation, but I think we've had um, a very thorough presentation. We have all the documentation. Are there any other comments or questions from um, the board or from the attendees? I don't see any other hands out. Um, Mike, thanks for staying up late again with us. <laughs> Anytime. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I just add one thing, uh, Becky. Uh, one of the things that comes up for me working in a lot of different systems is you know, you, you have a certain amount of water, you know, your wells and your, your reservoir, you can't save it up for three years. You can't, you know, it's there, make the best use of it. And I, I think about people with irrigation systems that I would bet most people don't know how long it goes on for, why it goes on for that long. And um, I've been looking for some, you know, educational material to teach people. You don't need, you're wasting money. The Jim's point, you're wasting money after a certain point, after that inch there's no more extra water that's gonna help you. So it's it's not just about you can or you can't, it's about making smart use out of it for everybody. You know, it's conservation isn't just about reducing, it's reducing, but it's just cutting out the waste. Don't use more than you need to. Great. All right, well, we're, we'll have to definitely keep that push going. Any other one, comments? One last, com yeah. Yeah, one yeah, last comment. I wanna make sure that we're getting the right final message out here that um, that we're on the right track, that we're investing in where we need to go. We're making policy changes and we have some of the strictest policies in the state in terms of what people, you can't even put a sprinkler system in in this town. Um, right. So everything is on the right path. And what we're, what we're really trying to manage for is the extreme situation. I mean, we're in a water drought right now and we're giving up three and a half inches of water over our well. Right, that's that's just flowing over our dam right now because it's too high. So the picture is we're being prudent and we're on the right path to solve for those stream events. But in the normal course of business, we're fine. And that doesn't mean you can't ignore those events, but we're taking all the right steps to move towards that situation where we don't have to be completely concerned when we're in a drought. Us, uh, you know, yeah. we have a bad summer, and in August, you know, we really don't have water, and we have to get hard, hard on the on the restrictions. And as Jim pointed out, when we do, the town responded, and and really cut back on the, the production by 25 30 percent, or not production usage. Usage. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Tony. Uh, is that our last word? I think that was our last word on the subject. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. <laughs> Rarely does that happen. <laughs> Anybody want to jump in? Just uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, great. Um, I did. Um, oh hi, Will. I'm sorry to do this to you, but uh, we did say that after this presentation, we give the uh, board just a five minute break because we've been in these seats now for almost three hours. Um, so if uh, Sean or uh, Seth will put on the, the interim music, dancing music, we will reconvene at nine eighteen. So don't go anywhere. Well, <laughs> Mike. Thank you. Yes, thank you, guys. Thanks, thank you. Sean. See you.
All right, we're just waiting for Mr. Vignani to rejoin. Then we will blaze through the rest of our agenda, right? <laughs> we have a new policy, 11 o'clock. Let's do it. Um, we had a quorum and we lost us. We still have a quorum. We do. We have one. We have a quorum. Oh, where'd you go? Should we start talking about, uh, oh, yeah. Tony then? Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's see, we are up to our 835, not a complete hour behind. Um, and it's for a bunch of contracts, some very substantial contracts that, um, Kevin Caffrey, the DPW, is going to walk us through. So, um, Kevin, some of these are routine. If you want to, we're going, we're going, pith, brevity is the soul of wit, and we will now begin talking about MAPC is the first. Yep, no problem. I'll try to talk quicker than Mike. Um, <laughs> the first one is the TASCO contract. Um, that's through the MAPC, and this gives us a contractor who does the sidewalk work that we typically do. So what we will do is we will use this contractor to get started on the continuation of Country Way with our grant that we received from um, Complete Streets. Okay, so the amount of the contract to be clear doesn't show the um, where the revenue sources are as you alluded, that it's not all. Okay. It, it varies because it's a unit price contract. So if somebody happened to come to me and say, we need to put a handicap ramp at this location, we would be able to install a handicap. We have a set price to do that handicap ramp. Yeah, great. Um, and as it pointed out in the back at the MAPC, uh, as being part of the consortium, it gives us the bulk, the benefit of bulk purchasing. Are there any Correct. questions from the board on this particular contract? We, uh, I think we do this annually anyway, right? We do. Yeah. Um, all right, if there aren't any questions, then I would entertain a motion on that. Uh, are we doing these all individually, I assume? Yes, okay. Um, is there a reason why there's not an amount on it? Did I miss that? Oh, Sorry. Th actually, that was a good point. I was gonna say the motion should include the amount, right, uh, Kevin? It's in the um, what we've done in the past is just do unit prices. We didn't set a specific amount because on the bid package, there's about 32 items that are all different unit price <coughs> items that we typically use. Oh, because you're using a predetermined, okay. Predetermined, predetermined. It's, yeah. it's a rate contract. Okay. Should we do a not to exceed number? I thought we did that last time. No, no. Jim's shaking his head. Okay, that's because the reason. You, you know, we're gonna do country way. That's an expensive project. And then all of a sudden you have a couple small ones to do and it's just based upon how many feet of pavement, how many feet of this, how many feet of that. So okay. uh, the more we do, the better it is, but the more it's going to cost. So it's just, this is just a contract that they are our sidewalk company. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Any Would other like questions? Motion? Yes, please. Move that the select board award the contracts to provide sidewalk supplies and construction services to Tasco Construction Company. Motion by Ms. Kern. Is there a second? Second, second by Mr. Goodrich. <coughs> um, if there's no further discussion on this, um, we will do a roll call vote. Ms. Canfield? Yes. Mr. Bignani? Yes. Ms. Conley? Yes. Ms. Curran? Yes, sorry. <laughs> Mr. Goodrich? Yes. Motion carries 5-0. The next contract is for the water meters. This is a continuation of the program that we started a few years ago, Kevin. I've forgotten exactly when. Uh, Quite a few years ago, yep. Yeah. Um, basically, this is another bid. We went out to bid for water meters. Um, we had two bidders, Styles Company and Thai Sales. Thai Sales was the low bidder. Thai Sales typically does, um, has been picking up a lot of our water work uh, for the meter bid. Um, and, and it's another one, depending on how many water meters we use, you know, that's, that's what we purchase. It's a unit price cost for the different types of meters that we need. Um, and that was specified in the bids. Does your staff install those or does the company do that? Do you just get them from them? We, yeah, we just get them, we install them. Um, yeah. The water department installs them. Um, there was a bigger meter that we just recently did down in Humrock. I think it was an eight inch meter and our staff did do the installation. Sean's guys did a great job and installed that themselves. Um, 
Can't thank him enough for that because that was a big one. Great. Are there any questions about this contract? I just oh, okay. Amora, then Tony. Tony's probably going to ask the same question. What you know? What percentage of the town have we remetered thus far, or where will where will we be at after <laughs> this phase? I'm going to call a friend and I'm going to say, Sean, can you give me an actual number on uh, what the percentage is if you're still there? You need a lifeline, Kev. I was going to say it's time. Okay. <laughs> um, I am still here. I would say um, we're currently between 40 and 50% um, to the radio reads, to the new style meters. Um, probably be closer, much closer to the 50% at the, um, after this award. Great. Thank you. Yep. Don't know, is that your question? He's nodding. <laughs> uh, great minds. Um, great. Okay. Um, if there are no other questions or comments, um, I will entertain a motion. Who's the, the board? Is Go ahead, Tom. <laughs> okay, Tony, you make the motion. <laughs> Who the board like would award the contract to provide water meters with absolute encoders and integrated radio to Thai si Sales Incorporated of Sudbury, Mass. for a unit price provided. Moved by Mr. Vignani, second by Ms. Curran. Um, I, the one question I did want to say is that I don't think the other bid was even complete, was it? It was not complete. It was not complete. So, but you're comfortable that, I mean, these, they, they're the ones who've been providing in the past. Okay. Yes. Um, great. I'm done commenting. We have a motion and a second. Um, uh, this requires a roll call vote. Ms. Canfield. Yes. Mr. Vignani? Yes. Ms. Conley? Yes. Ms. Curran? Yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes. Thank you. The motion carries 5 0. Um, the, the next contract is for the Well 18 for Aqualine. I don't, we need to have any more conversation about this and the need, but uh, this was approved at town meeting, I believe. Am I getting that right? Uh, and this is the right. contract. You want to give two, two sentences on it? Kevin. Discharge water from the greenfield. Oh, you're you're speaking Norwell. Sorry, Kevin, you're speaking Norwell. We didn't get that. Sean, do you want to just give a highlight way he works out his unstableness? <laughs> sure. This is the um, a contract um, for the residuals management plan for well 18B. Basically, this is what Mike said. We have the the treatment vessels as part of the emergency treatment for um, the emergency work at the treat surface water treatment plant, but we need a means to dispose of the water. And this is gonna uh, give us that means. Great, thank you, Sean. Any questions about this contract from the board? Okay, um, seeing none, I would entertain a motion on this. Move that the select board award the contract to construct a residual disposal management system for well 18B to Aqualine Utility Incorporated for $189,231.20. Moved by Ms. Kern. Is there a second? Okay, second by Mr. Goodrich, by everyone. Um, <laughs> this matter requires, if there's no other discussion, requires a roll call vote. Ms. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Vignani? Yes. Ms. Conley? Yes. Ms. Curran? Yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes. Great. Motion carries 5-0. Next is for the highway department, six-wheel truck purchase. Again, I believe this was um, approved at town meeting, and this is the contract for the purchase for a whopping $139,556.21. Kevin, are you back online? Uh, I hope so. Can you there hear me? There you are. Yes. Okay, great. So we had one of our main trucks that has a sanding, salting route and plowing route. Um, the frame broke on it last year. So this is the replacement of that truck. Um, it went through town meeting um, and, you know, it's going to be exciting. Another big truck. Great. Okay. Well, it as was only uh, a deep, as only a DPW director could get excited about. <laughs> <laughs> or my seven-year-old. I was going to yes. say, can, Mitch, I, can we put on the motion that this must be displayed at the uh, touch a truck when we can do that again? <laughs> they always uh, are. They always <laughs> are. All right. So, yeah, this was approved by town uh, meeting as a purchase other and reviewed by 
capital and all the other departments. So if, uh, if there are any questions or comments, seeing none, then I would entertain a uh, motion. Move to award the highway department six six wheel truck purchase to Taylor and Lloyd for an amount of $139,556.21. Moved by Ms. Connolly. Is there a second? Somebody, uh, Ms. Curran, uh, this requires a roll call vote. Ms. Campbell? Uh, yes. Mr. Vignani? Yes. Ms. Conley? Yes. Ms. Curran? Yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes. <laughs> On behalf of his children. <laughs> uh, so we have a uh, five zero on that contract. Thank you. And the last from Kevin is the sewer camera contract. Um, for $92,954. So this money was also allocated at town meeting and this is for a robotic um, sewer camera that we would actually install in pipes looking for leaks and running down lines trying to um, see if we have blockages in the pipes or just leaks in general. And it's part of our INI program. And Thank you. if we'll get really excited about this, but you know, we'll leave it at we'll leave it at that. He's on here. Well, Willie, well, you stayed up with us, so give us give us why we need this. Because <laughs> it's fun. No. <laughs> oh. I'll say this: we'll only use uh, this, the camera for sewer. We won't we won't do it in the water lines or anything else. Looking for water leaks. Yeah, we're very excited for this system. It'll be replacing our now defunct uh, system that ran on a VHS player. Uh, so just to speak to the age and urgency of getting this equipment out in the field. Uh, I also give a shameless plug, uh, the DPW Summer Help Program uh, shall hopefully be beginning again this year. So to parents with college students uh, that have some technical skills, uh, there may be, you know, some interesting use and application for using these devices out in the field. Um, we'd love to have, you know, as many applicants as we can. I love when our sewer superintendent uses the word plug in a sentence. So uh, <laughs> thank you for that. Hope, and uh, maybe we can help uh, get that information out for you. I appreciate it. Um, are there any other questions about the sewer camera contract? Mr. Goodrich. Super quick. It says 820 feet uh, real. That thing can really go that far. That's amazing. It is. It's. It's. An, it'll go. It'll go a good distance through manholes. Everything else, they're amazing. Oh, all right, that's pretty right. impressive. Mr. Goodrich would like to, also. Yeah, Mr. Goodrich would like to join you at the uh, inaugural use. Yes. <laughs> um, great. Are there any other questions about this? I've honestly, it's past nine thirty. Did we do? We didn't do a motion yet, have we? No. Nope. If we have no further discussion, could we have a motion, please? Move to award the sewer camera contract to visual imaging resources for $92,954. Moved by Ms. Connolly. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Goodrich. There's no further discussion, then we will have a roll call vote. Ms. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Vignani? Yes. Ms. Connolly? Oops, sorry, Ms. Connolly? Yes. Ms. Curran? Yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes. All right, the motion carries 5-0. Thank you so much. Uh, you. The next, uh, uh, Will doesn't get to go away because we need him on the next conversation. Sorry, Maura, did sorry. I? Yeah, uh, sorry, I thought you were in, needed something. Do you need anything, Ms. Curran? Oh, no, I was okay. saying goodbye to Will. <laughs> nope, nope, we don't let him out yet. Um, so our next item, and I apologize to everyone that's had to wait, we just ran behind today, um, is the sewer connection request for the Riverway condos um, located at 60 New Drift Way. And I see Mr. DeLisi is here and is Scott Arnold as well, who is on my agenda. Or Mr. DeLisi, are you representing? Okay, um, fine, we'll eat. <laughs> there we right. go, hi, you guys can there. hear me now? We can, so we did right. receive a great deal of backup, but if you could give uh, the public um, an overview of, of this, the, the request and why it's needed. Sure, happy to do so. Je Jeff DeLisi, Orenberger DeLisi and Harris, uh, my engineers, uh, Kelly Colleen and Scott Arnold from CHA Companies are, I believe, on the call tonight. Uh, we represent the Riverway Condominium Trust. Uh, the property is located at 60 New Driftway. There are seven buildings on the property, 26 total units and 72 total bedrooms. 
the buildings were constructed in approximately 2010. There are three existing septic systems on the property. Um, after the buildings were occupied, the town then laid out the sewer main down the south side of the new driftway. When the main was installed, the sewer connection was contemplated to this property as evidenced by a sewer stub that was um, also constructed at the time. The property bounds on and is sloped down towards the North River and is in a priority sewer district. The, um, uh, the association has recently been experiencing significant issues with the, uh, with the functioning of at least one of its septic systems. Uh, on analysis by our engineers, it was determined that a new system would be, would be required but um, a septic system obviously is not in the best interest of the environment in that area, nor for the property owners of the town. So we decided that the only you know, real viable option here would be to connect to the sewer. We've had a few meetings with Will um, and shared our engineering. We understand that the uh, fee for the connection would be $16,000 per each of the 26 dwelling units. Uh, rather than seek a pay plan or to negotiate a sewer connection agreement, uh, the association has decided to borrow money uh, to pay for its fee, uh, its engineering legal and contractor costs. And um, recently we filed our applications. Um, so upon approval, if, uh, if approved, we would be paying a total fee to the town under my calculation of $416,000 in one lump sum. Uh, Mr. Branton asked that we request this meeting and obtain your blessing as the sewer commissioners in the town. It's our understanding that the town has the capacity to accept the flow at this time. And while we believe that the town is acceptable to the town's engineers, I'm happy to ask our engineers to review the plan with the board tonight, or alternatively, just to answer any questions the board may have. I know that they have Title five design flow data and actual water usage data to share with you since March, 2019. And with that, I'll, I'll either answer any questions or just ask CHA to give a brief overview. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, we did have a lot of the backup in our packet as far as the usage and all. Um, if you're somebody from your team would like to add, why don't we ask them to do that next? And then I'll ask Will to give his uh, assessment from a town side. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you. This is Kelly Killeen from CHA. We've been working on this project with the association for the past year. Um, we've been monitoring their system. We feel that it would be prudent at this time due to uh, saturated so uh, soil conditions and uh, diminished uh, capacity within one of the particular system, which is a, a larger system on the site. Um, it carries, uh, it's designed for about uh, two thirds of the flow for the site. Um, we think that it's, uh, although it's only been in since 2008 um, or thereabout, um, we feel that this system, uh, there's, there's something occurring, um, creating a, a lens in there that's preventing this from, from uh, infiltrating properly. Um, we did hand test pits out there over the past year. Um, we witnessed it during dry periods. Um, Last year, um, we, we should have seen uh, very <clears throat> little surface water. However, um, um, when we did uh, uh, the monitoring out there um, and the test pits, um, it was very reduced uh, infiltration out there. Um, the flows that we're talking about for the total project uh, for the 26 units are uh, the Title V flows are uh, 7,920. Um, the water use records that we've received in average over the past uh, uh, two years um, are, are very low. Uh, they average about 1,600 gallons a day, um, which is kind of surprising. We would anticipate seeing something um, about half of the Title V flows, but the flows out there are very low. Um, so uh, that's pretty much it in a recap. Um, Attorney DeLisi did uh, a pretty good overview of the uh, project. Um, you, you mentioned the title flow of fives. I thought in the backup that that number was 5,000, not seven. The system that's failing right now is 5,000. Um, okay. The overall for the project is uh, 7,920. And I just want to note that um, in the original approvals, there were two apartment units up in the front of the site that were never constructed. We're not including that in the, um, 
uh, in the um, t in, in the flows or the connections. Is are the site is the site that didn't get developed? It is still developable. Um, is it, that? It, there, it, it is. I believe that there's um, the right to develop, but I don't believe that it is likely to happen. Uh, certainly not on the horizon, but if and when that were to occur, we understand that we would need to file an application for a connection in, in, in that circumstance. Okay. Is that accurate, Will? Like if they, if they were granted this app, um, uh, connection, would there be, would they be by right, have the right to use that line? If it's the same uh, lot? If that building exists on the same lot, then yes, that lot abuts the gravity service. If they subdivided the lot um, and they no longer abutted that service, they would not have a buy right. Okay. You could make that as a condition though, that you know that would be it. It wouldn't be a buy right for those other two lots if you wanted. Yeah, and, and that's something that we anticipated and understand would be the case if and when that ever occurred. That we would have okay. to come back to you. So we would accept that type of condition. Okay. Yeah. Um, anyone else from your team like to give us any more information? Okay. No? Um, Will, I think the board would very much like to hear from you and Kevin about uh, your assessment of the situation. I, I guess I'll start off. Uh, we're very happy that the plans are going to be utilizing a grinder pump system. Uh, which is one of those low pressure systems. They're known for being um, very good against uh, protecting against inflows and infiltration and for conveying waste in a safe and reasonable manner. Um, given the proximity to a waterway and the state of their septic system, uh, pleased to see uh, that this environmental concern could be addressed by providing sewer service. Okay, and capacity, which I know Mr. Vignone is gonna ask next. <laughs> Uh, capacity, uh, currently we're doing pretty well from a combination of factors, uh, most significantly the drought year and the Cedar Point uh, sewer main improvement project. Uh, these two factors have put our capacity uh, in a very optimistic light currently. Uh, we're waiting to see uh, how our capacity may change over the next year if the drought condition were to end. Um, but with continued inflow and infiltration projects, I believe we can achieve uh, greater capacity down the road. Um, to the board, uh, additional questions? Because there's a lot to talk about here. Who wants to go first? Tony, you look ready. Sure. Yeah, well, uh, well, what's the number? What's, what's, what's the percentage of, that we're functioning yeah. at? Yeah. Uh, we don't have the April numbers factored in yet, but for the first time in a long time, we are below our 80% threshold. Uh, we're at about 78% of our capacity right now, permitted out of 1.6. Uh, so about 1.26 MGD this time. That's great. That's, that's great. And that's the combination. I'm sorry, Tony, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, and so, that's already reaping the benefits of Cedar Point or not? That's with the initial benefits of Cedar Point and the drought year. Um, just to give a, a, a brief summary of how substantial uh, weather conditions or climate conditions are for the situate sewer collection system. It's estimated that about 400 to 600,000 gallons per day of our sewer flows is inflows and infiltration. Um, so we can have a lot of variability in those numbers. Uh, and that really speaks to the importance of, of continuing to fund and maintain uh, I, &I projects. So do Cedar think, Point is an amazing first step. Right, so when do you think the majority of that water is seawater from Cedar Point or rainwater from the whole system? It's, it's tough to say. Uh, it's probably a, a fairly even split between the two. Uh, Cedar Point, the Cedar Point project has probably benefited us anywhere from 60,000 to 100,000 gallons per day. Uh, we'll be doing some flow studies out there uh, over the course of the late spring and summer to really narrow down those numbers. Um, and then once we have those numbers narrowed down, we can really speak uh, accurately to how uh, beneficial it's been. Sure, well, that's great news because we were in the high 90s. Mm -hmm. If I if I can jump in there, just Tony, and just go over it, it's it's not a quick set easy number. There's a lot of variables, and we'll be watching it for a year. I was looking at past years. Um, you know, I've got a spreadsheet Will puts together, and it goes over the past fifteen to twenty years, and we look at the evaluation of 
how the flows go. And, and sometimes it doesn't always make sense. We've had dry months, you know, this year and then past years we were actually lower. So it, it's going to take a while. It's not just Will can pull out a number, crunch, crunch a couple of things and come up with a, a dedicated number. It, it depends on the soil conditions, the water table and a, and a ton of factors. So we, we don't have our hands. We know we've had a significant savings. I don't know how much savings yet from the Cedar Point, but so far it's look it's looking pretty good. That's great. Um, well, I'll just go through the few things that I thought about when I read this. Um, one, can we do it because of capacity? Because we were right up against it, you know, a year ago before Cedar Point came in. So it seems like that question has been checked as yes. Number two, are we putting these 26 condos ahead of other people in town? You know, that's the minus for the projects. Although it's not really an apples to apples, 26 to 26. These are very low utilizing condos. So it may be 26 condos to a handful of houses. Um, the, the third thing that I, th I thought about that I've been talking about for several years is we need to, first of all, the system's failing. So they have to do something. It's not like we're just giving a gift to somebody that wants to be on the sewer. Um, but we do have to get more income into the enterprise fund by utilizing our current infrastructure. And that's why I support getting projects like this and other people that have failed systems, if they can get into our infrastructure easily, then to have that done and take that money that we need desperately into the enterprise fund to make ourselves financially um, stable. So, um, this project for me checks all those boxes. It's a failed system. It's a low utilization system. We have the capacity and we need the, we need the revenue in the, into the enterprise fund. So that's, that's just the way that I looked at it. Thank you, Mr. Vignani. Uh, other questions from the board? Um, the one thing I will add is that uh, it was mentioned by um, uh, Jeff that the Location is abutting the uh, North River, and it is my understanding that conservation is going to be reviewing this on Monday. Is that accurate, Jim? Um, but that it's generally speaking, it's um, it's a priority area from an environmental and, conser and um, conservation standpoint. It, it's up um, for their consideration next week on uh, Monday or Tuesday. I talked to Amy today. It is a permittable project, and going from septic to soil would be an improvement for the resource area. Okay. Tell Can I ask one more question? Yeah, Attorney DeLisi, is this the piece of property that years ago when it was built, there was supposed to be a, a mixed use component up on the street? So I was not involved in the permitting of this property, but I did uh, review uh, something to that effect in one of the documents that I had filed. The, the, the short answer to your question is yes, it is. Okay, so I guess what we wanna make sure, and I think we did with the, with, the, with the comments beforehand, that any new building on the site would have to come before us before they would be allowed to use sewer. So I, I believe that was the intention of the property that right up in that upper left-hand corner, there was supposed to be some sort of either commercial or mixed use building. Yeah, and that's my understanding as well. And, okay. and uh, like I indicated, uh, we would consent to a condition that if and when that's constructed, we would have to come back to the, uh, to the board, to the sewer commissioners for approval uh, at that time of a connection. Great, Great. thank you. You're welcome. Does, does the board, um, are there any further questions from the board on this matter? I don't see any, I would like to, um, See if anyone uh, participating in this uh, Zoom wants to raise hand and have any comments about this proposal. I do not see any. Um, so we've talked about amending the motion to um, prohibit. Oh, Madam sorry. Sorry, there was a hand raised. I see Mr. D'Onofrio has found his unmute button. <laughs> um, Mr. D'Onofrio, if you'd like to state your name and uh, address for the record. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mark D'Onofrio, 743 Country West. Oh, you froze up there a minute. <clears throat> also, the, um, also the current chair, the um, president of the Situate Chamber of Commerce. Um, 
I just wanted to um, you know, bring to light again that the town continues to, to when, even when we're told that the sewer um, system is at capacity, uh, when we seek to get um, sewer capacity for North Situate, we keep getting told that they're at capacity, at capacity, at capacity. We can't do that. We can't do it. I understand that this is a low flow project, you know, et cetera, but every time it seems like every time we turn around, we're giving away little bits um, to, to these uh, projects and we'll never get there uh, when it comes to North Situate. So I, I just wanted to you know, remind the select board about that um, particular matter. We have been trying desperately for years to get sewer capacity for North Situate and um, you know, current plans um, aside, it's just not moving any too quickly. So, so um, just wanted to make that point and um, you know, ask us some consideration that you know, at least we put Situate, North Situate on, um, on a fast track rather than continue to give up capacity every time there's a little bit of uh, excess availability. Okay, uh, thank you, Mark, for that reminder. I do wanna note that in our backup packet, um, Mr. Branton was good enough to say, Thank to you. remind us what the capacity is, is projected to be at build out North Situate. And if I remember correctly, it was 900,000 a day. No, I'm sorry, 90,000 uh, gallons per day. Good, I did that at memory after almost 10 o'clock. Um, so you're right, uh, we're very mindful of, 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 of inching away at that. Um, right now, that capacity is fully anticipated to be done in a, a different source than our current plant. So they're almost, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, am I characterizing this right, Kevin and Will? That, that, that's accurate. Yep, we're still also continuing I and I projects. Okay. Yes, yeah, the our, board, our the board. I &I. Okay, I and I. So the board is very much um, um, in the past has um, supported that this that North Situate is a priority. Okay, <laughs> he's just shaking his head. <laughs> now we're we're currently actively seeking funding uh, for design and engineering of North Situate, um, and with our current uh, phase of I and I projects, hope to be able to make a presentation by this time next year to speak to the town's ability. Uh, whether or not we can confirm moving forward with that project. So very much looking forward to this time next year. As we are. Mark, did you want to add anything more than Tony? Well, I, I, again, in, in, in all due respect, um, and I do mean that, um, the, 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 the merchants in the area, and North Switch, has been hearing this for 10 years now. So, you know, forgive me. But again, I, every time I hear that there's no Capacity. But Mark, we I haven't given away ninety thousand. Given capacity. Yeah, but you got to start yeah, somewhere. We I'm haven't sorry. given away ninety thousand, you know, units of capacity to anybody. The the fact of the matter is, is that there's not enough in the project that we just completed. You just heard Will and and Kevin say that's yielding far more capacity than we anticipated. But they want to gauge it for a year <clears> to really get a better sense of what that consistent capacity will be. So Kevin and, and Will, correct me if I'm wrong, but I recall that the initial thought was that Cedar Point would free up 40,000 um, um, gallons yeah. a day, if you will. Um, and now we're seeing- I think we originally said 20 to 40,000. Yeah. Yeah. So I understand your frustration, but I, I don't think we've had that- <clears throat> big lot of capacity in order to accommodate North Situate. And we all know that the minute we open up the pipes up there, that mm -hmm. development is gonna skyrocket and it's just going to, um, you know, Reach move the quickly. Mass. Yeah, it's gonna move quickly up there. Yeah. And okay. think about the revenue sources there. Absolutely. We, are, we all, we're, sure. all in the, we're all rowing in the same direction, Mark. So thank you for that reminder. Tony, you were patient. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just add, uh, as you know, Mark, it's a priority and more than likely that that waste is going to go to uh, in the other direction um, is what we're really working on. And the one thing that we have to keep in mind here um, is that this is a failed system. This is us giving um, somebody new development access to a sewer system. This is a failed system, like several houses come to us. Actually, not too many, but a few, yeah. you know, 
you know, probably less than a half a dozen houses come to us every year and say, hey, I need to hook up to the sewer system because I'm in a health risk situation. So um, <clears throat> I just don't want anyone to think that any of the board doesn't think and any of the, the past boards didn't think that North Sitchin was a priority and can still believe it to be that way. Thank you, Tony. Um, okay, uh, Ms. Connolly. Yes, so um, just to explore the alternative, there is no alternative to hooking up to sewer. You have no alternative uh, such as building a new septic system there. And I would question if it's, this is such a low, low flow system um, and it's only what, 12 years old or something, what's causing the failure? We're not sure what's causing the failure. <clears throat> We've looked adjacent to the system. We've dug in the system. Um, we, we can't dig to a depth without destroying what's there. Um, but if we were to replace the system, the likelihood of DEP um, uh, granting us uh, permission to do this for a system of this size, um, regardless of the flow going into it from the water use, it would still be uh, sized for Title V, so the 7920 would still be used. Um, but because it is a failed system, uh, DEP would, and the Board of Health most likely would be looking for us to go to sewer if it's available. But you haven't gone to that point. What do you mean we haven't gone to that point? Well, you, in other words, has someone told you, DEP, that there is no alternative but to hook up to sewer? No alternative? No. Uh, yeah, they I don't have not told you that. We, we, no, the answer is we've not been told that. Well, I, I'm concerned as well. I don't know, you know, uh, James Landing is older there, I assume, on a septic system as well, what's the likelihood that they'll be coming to us at some point? Um, and as I say, I think this is a relatively new septic system. Um, it's just, I'm, I am concerned about the, the drip, 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 of adding a few here, a few here, a few here, a few here. And I, I shared uh, Mr. D'Onofrio's frustration that now we're being told, oh, well, next year at this time, we'll be addressing the North situate situation. I know that the town, Jim and uh, Karen have been working very hard to work with Cohasset and Hull about the alternate, but we've been waiting for that as well. So I, I just wanna go on record as saying, I understand that my, people might not like this, but um, I just feel as though no one's told you you can't build a new system there, at least not yet. If, if I may, the, the adjacent project actually is on sewer. The James Landing project is on sewer. Is it? So, so why didn't this go on sewer? Sewer was not available when this was originally permitted. <clears throat> we permitted this project under Polar and Colantonio Antonio back in 2004 under different developers. And since the um, it was kind of slow to start. It came online in phases. Um, there were several different site contractors involved at different, different times throughout the project. Uh, portions of the project came online uh, down, towards the, the, um, uh, down towards the marina first, and ultimately um, the project struggled uh, to come online by fully on 2009. Um, Well, all right. Um, uh, other questions or comments about this? This is definitely a challenging request. Yeah. Mr. Vignani? Yeah, just one last comment. I don't think the board can ignore the fact that we need to get additional sources of revenue to the sewer enterprise fund. And we need to do it. When you, when you add sewers that you're building, you make no money on it. When you add sewers on infrastructure you've always built, it's income going into that fund. And this is almost a half a million dollars of money that that enterprise fund desperately needs. And that has got to be part of the plan of that enterprise fund every year going forward. We have to say, we have to add 10, 15, 20 units a year to that plan so that, it, so that we don't have to keep raising sewer rates to outrageous levels. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Goodrich? Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with Tony more. Um, number one, as a failing system, if something did happen, the environmental impact on that area and around would be unbelievable. But we just we just approved that robot. Uh, it was, <laughs> no, but seriously, what, what I'm the talking camera. about is that seriously, right. all these things that we're doing. Tony's right. We need money to find those really bad sewer lines that the INI that was failing in other places. We need that money to fix those things so we can get to North Situate. I mean, I can't. Yeah, I mean, the, for us to, for, for us to get there, we're going to not only need the revenue. It'd be fabulous to have everyone on once we have capacity on sewer and those environmentally you know, dangerous areas. So yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Nancy, what's the deficit right now in the enterprise? Just out of curiosity, since it was your- For fiscal 22, for fiscal 22, 147,000. Is the projected de deficit. Fiscal 22, yeah. All right. And without money, we can't plug other holes. Okay. So, um, we've heard from Con conservation, sewer commissioner, finance, and the board, um, <laughs> and and residents. Are there any other questions or comments about this matter? I'm seeing if anyone's raising hand that we like an opportunity. Um, I I think that my personal hand hand wringing on this is, you know, I think Mark's not wrong. Is we have. We have competing interests for limited resources and we want to be smart about it. Um, and, um, you know, uh, unfortunately, you have to look at all the mitigating, uh, we, we're charged with looking at the mitigating factors of each application. Um, I have great respect for the work that Will does. And if he's not saying that this is a colossally bad idea, I have great comfort in that personally. Um, but I do think that making sure that we're not opening the door to additional development on that site without review is important. So um, those are my final comments. If somebody is uh, compelled, do we want to make a motion on this? Oh, Ms. Connolly? Just one, I wanna clarify. The, the amount of money for the hookup will be paid in one lump sum to the town now. Is that correct, it's Attorney? It's not gonna be over 20 years. Oh no, it's well, a betterment thing. Yeah. I'm just clarifying because yeah. it's obviously a big infusion of cash into the enterprise fund, which is fine. But I just want to make sure that the town is protected. If something happened to the condo association and that, that we're not standing in line waiting to get paid with anybody else. Yeah. They said they're taking a loan. Yeah, we're, that, that's that, that's us. correct. Yeah, that's correct. Yes. So the town will receive whatever it is, the four hundred thousand. Four hundred sixty-one thousand. One pink. I don't have the book in front of me. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so. Um, four hundred and sixteen thousand will be paid in one lump sum upon the connection approval. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Good question. Uh, any other comments or concerns? Well, that we haven't covered. Would somebody like to make a motion? Linda? We're on page 197. <laughs> I'm just pulling the number. There's a lot of backup in our stuff. <laughs> No, 197 is close. No. no, oh, I just made that up, Tony. Sorry. <laughs> Does anyone have that doc page? Uh, what are rates? Uh, there's no motion, so we'll. Uh, oh, there's no we'll motion. Have to cobble it together here. Yeah. I no, there apologize. There is a motion. What page, Hold Michelle? On. Yeah, I'm trying to find it. I'm getting there. Hold on, folks. Apologies, everyone. This is. I just awful. want to make sure we get it right. Yeah, no, no worries. You guys have had a jammed agenda tonight. A lot of material. Sometimes it's easy to forget that you guys do this as volunteers. <laughs> 
a special kind of crazy. <laughs> okay, it is on page, oh, hold on. Hold on. Well, she's looking, I'll remind the board, we have a policy of a 11 o'clock stop. And I've been advised that if we would, um, if the board chooses, we can postpone a discussion of the, sorry, Will, of the sewer water um, rate um, review, which is another very substantial conversation. Um, and I would, as required by the policy, we're supposed to review the agenda at a point and decide whether or not we have enough time. Um, if there are no very strenuous objections, um, I would propose that we postpone that conversation. Sorry, Will, with an asterisk to Mr. Branton and Ms. Holt. She gets to join us every week, so. Um, is there anyone that would have an objection to uh, postponing that uh, till our next meeting? Nope, okay. All right, then I will, as Michelle's looking for that, then we will uh, just let folks know that we are removing the discussion of um, transfer stations, which was scheduled at 9.20 so that we can get through the rest of our agenda for tonight. Uh, Michelle, did you find it? You know, I cannot find it in the backup, but I do. <laughs> I did find it somewhere else. I'm happy to read it if, um, if would that you, is allowed. If you would read it, we can have somebody make the motion um, after you read it. Okay, perfect. Move to approve seven sewer application permits for Riverview, Riverview Condominium, 60 new driftway for buildings A through G with a connection fee of 416,000. Would someone like to add, 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 addend that? I, uh, I move. Well, uh, I mean, are we gonna, um, in, uh, to specify oh, oh. in the motion that there'll be no, this will not extend to any development on the site? Right. Um, adding to that motion that any future development on that site would have to come before the board for any other, for any additional hookups. Moved by Mr. Vignani as amended. Is there a second? Mr. Goodrich has seconded. We have a motion um, and a second. Are there, are there any other discussions or concerns? Seeing none, this requires a roll call vote. Ms. Canfield? Yes. Mr. Vignani? Yes. Ms. Conley? Yes. Ms. Curran? Yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Um, uh, Jeff, what's the timeline on this? Do you have one yet? I should have asked that before. But... I probably should uh, defer to Kelly on this one. The project is currently out to bid with contractors. We're expecting bids back um, the first week of June. Um, once received, they'll make an award. We anticipate uh, this um, to take less, just under three months. So I would, I would, I would just the caveat on that, um, Karen, would be uh, that it probably it sounds to me that the timeline to commence the work is as quick as we can close on the loan. Okay, and yeah. then the payment to the town will be upon closing the loan. So yeah, it like, would, yeah, yeah, it'll be out of the disbursement of the loan proceeds directly. Okay. All right, obviously keep Nancy well in the, that conversation because we're about to change our fiscal year. <laughs> yeah, well, I was just gonna ask you that is um, <clears throat> knowing that it, it does it, it, it certainly would make a difference to make sure that you can get the payment prior to the end of June, is that it? Nancy? If it comes in prior to the end of June, it's gonna flow out to retained earnings. If it comes in after July 1st, it's gonna be a revenue source that we'll know will um, make revenue projections and might impact your rate decisions. Or I would hope it would not impact your rate decisions, but it might. What is best for the town that the payment come in in the fiscal, in this fiscal year and the next fiscal year? I don't want to um, push the payment to either fiscal year when it when it's to be appropriately dispersed for the connection, like any other connection, is when we should receive it. Okay. And then we'll deal with it, um, however, however it falls. Okay. All right. Good. All right. We'll go forth in finance. Thank um, you for asking. <laughs> great. Um, great. Okay. Thank so, you very much. Have a good night. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Um, thank you. Bye. Our next is our, our 905, which is a grant of an easement from the um, electric company 
for the uh, well at Tack Factory Pond. Um, as I understand it, Kevin, that work has already been completed. Um, and this is to give them their proper access as a easement to the site. Is there any more detail we need? Um, nope, that's it. But first, uh, Sean, Sean and Will, I'm all set for the remaining two items. We're not doing the rate studies. You guys can take off. Don't stick around. So, uh, sorry. Well, I apologize. I would have, if I had known, I would have not made you stay up this late. <laughs> no, all good. Um, thanks, guys. thanks guys for being on. Um, basically what we'll be waiting for now is the road has been constructed as well as the building and a lot of the other stuff. So we'll just be waiting on national grid to come in and put in the new poles and run the electric service down there. Um, we thought they already had an easement and we thought they'd be able to work off that, but they required a new easement because they're putting in new poles and, um, feel it's it's slightly changed so we we just figured it'd be easy to get the easement instead of arguing with the electric company the poles are not there now how are they how is the service being provided well the service that's being provided to the other building there are poles there they're putting in new poles to bring in the new three-phase service to run the building and how the many poles, new poles the old poles yeah. would follow the old right away karen this is a the new entrance that we put in Okay. I think the plan shows shows on the plan. Hold on. I thought it was six. Uh, the plan that I'm looking at shows four. Okay. And that goes down, back, and behind? Yep. Correct. Okay. Um, are there questions or comments about this uh, easement? Okay. All right, are there, uh, I don't see any hands raised. If anyone wanted to chime in on the easement for the well, um, in that case, I would entertain a, a motion. Move that the Board of Selectmen grant an easement to Massachusetts Electric Company for a parcel of land situated on the northerly side of TAC Factory Pond Drive, lot 4-26, assessors map 42, Recorded with the Plymouth County Register of Deeds in Plan Book 6, page 746. Moved by Ms. Curran. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Vignani. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, this requires a roll call vote. Ms. Canfield? Yes. Mr. Vignani? Yes. Ms. Conley? Yes. Ms. Curran? Yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you, Kevin. Um, the next is for you as well. Um, we have a discussion vote on declaration of surplus DPW vehicles and Harbor Master equipment, uh, which was detailed in our backup on the motion. Um, Kevin, what are you selling? <laughs> um, I believe we're getting rid of an old truck. I believe we're getting rid of a chipper. Actually, it's an old loader. Um, it is the old loader that's down at the highway barn right now. Um, and we're also getting rid of a chipper, and there might be a truck involved in that. I don't remember off the top of my head. Well, the backup says a 2006 Chevy Silverado and a 1986 Cat, which would be the loader. Right. Okay. And the Harbor Master, it's a lot of stuff they, after the project, they don't need anymore, right? So, two things they don't need anymore the old gangway, we can spend that surplus and see what's that. And I figured out that there's a, a large pile of granite blocks, uh, and those were the moorings that held the old docks in place that we don't need anymore. So we're gonna declare those surplus. We've already had some interest in those, some people <laughs> looking to buy those. So uh, we'll see what we get from them. Great. Uh, are there any questions about this um, vote? Put money, is the money all go to the general fund? Uh, the money from Kevin's goes to the general fund. The money from the water, from the uh, Harbor Master goes to the waterways fund. Okay. If there are no other questions on this, I will entertain a motion. Move to approve a surplus auction to dispose of obsolete DPW vehicles and Harbor Master equipment. Moved by Mr. Vignani. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Connolly. Is there further discussion? Seeing none, uh, this requires a roll call vote. Ms. Canfield? Yes. Mr. Vignani? Yes. Ms. Connolly? Yes. Ms. Curran? Yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you so much. Um, as noted, we are skipping over what was our schedule 920, which is the discussion of water, sewer, and transfer station rates. 
um, and appreciate that accommodation to our schedule, uh, which will bring us to what was our 10 o'clock and we're suddenly back on track, <laughs> um, is to talk about the Situate Wind Curtailment Agreement. Um, as everyone recalls, we had a lengthy discussion about um, how we were gonna find some relief for the residents. Um, and that resulted in a vote by the board to uh, cease operations from uh, May 16th, which is this Sunday, I believe, until mid-October from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. The contract before the board is uh, codifying that vote. Um, it is consistent with the language of the prior curtail curtailment agreement uh, and um, and is a voluntary agreement that the um, operator has um, has agreed to um, to go into um, you know to agree to to I can't even talk after ten that's why we why we don't have meetings late um, that the, the, we're in agreement with the operator that the terms are acceptable it spells out how uh, what our financial requirements are to make them whole to accommodate that. I don't have it in front of me, but I believe the total was estimated to be around $59,000 a year, give or take um, conditions. Roughly, and yeah. that. Is yeah. that correct? Roughly, yeah. All right, Jim, would you like to add anything to that? No, I think you, you covered all of it. Um, the the uh, agreement was drawn up between uh, Citroen and Town Council. Town Council's approved it. So um, this is what's in front of you. If you approve it tonight, then the shutoff starts on, I think, Sunday is the 16th. Sunday is the 16th. Um, and I think at the board, obviously, you know, we were all in agreement that we wanted to find a way to find relief for the residents. And this was the most expedient way to get there. So um, we've all received the contract. Have you had, are there any additions or questions or comments about the language of that contract that um, you would like to bring to the Mr. Bedro's attention? Ms. Curran? I had a couple of questions. So Jim, I don't know if you have it open. Um, in section, oh God, I hate these now, we therefore ones, whereas <laughs> um, down probably one, two, three, four, five, six, about seven talking about um, all terms not defined herein shall have the meaning set forth in the lease or the, or the net metering sales agreement. In number one after that, do you see where I am? Yep, seller shall use commercially reasonable efforts. Mm -hmm. yep, that's, in the, that's defined in the lease agreement. So yep. that cannot be adjusted at all? So I think, you know, one of the concerns that we've heard from residents is that, you know, we've committed as a board, right, to turn this off between 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. So with the commercially reasonable efforts language to cause it to cease, I mean, I don't know what the rest of the, I don't know if this is the appropriate place or what the other members think. That seems a little weak to me. Um, do we put in, you know, ensuring that it's adhering to the start and stop times as agreed to in exhibit A? I don't know if you can. Um, that is what's in the current agreement and the current lease. Mm -hmm. That is what they've agreed to in the past. Um, that I'd have to go back to the lawyers uh, I don't know, and I did speak to, to Gordon Dean about this. You can't think of any conditions where they wouldn't be able to shut it off. They haven't had any issues where they haven't been able to shut it off. Mm -hmm. But in the current agreements, it talks about the commercially, commercially reasonable efforts to do so. Yeah, I don't have a problem with commercially reasonable efforts. I understand that, but I'm just wondering if we restate the times, just so they're not in the process of starting it at 11 p.m., does that make sense? That's how I'm kind of reading this language. So I'm just, I don't know what other board members think. Right, but the, the hours are part of the exhibit. They're in there. Supposed to be shut down between 11 and 6. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, in, that's in the agreement, just someplace else. Yeah, so down, down, the hours are down below voluntary curtailment period between the hours 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. So I don't know if we change that to beginning at 11 p.m., and ending at 6 a.m. I'm just trying to be a little bit more definitive here for them. That's, that's, in my opinion, that's not any more definitive. What does beginning mean? It's supposed to be shut off at 11 o'clock. 
But okay, if, that's if fine. You're getting at eleven o'clock. I could say, well, I start to shut it off at eleven o'clock. But the, the agreement is, the understanding is, it's shut off at eleven o'clock. All right, then maybe above it needs to be more clearly defined. Then, sorry, right. I mean that's just my perception of this. Does anyone else um, have concerns about that particular language to ensure that it is really eleven to six? Karen, Ms. Connell? Yeah, I, I'll just say that it seems to me as though if we are making them whole, to make it sound like it's voluntary is, I don't know. I, 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 I know the lawyers draft these things up, but if they're getting paid, it's not exactly voluntary. Oh, it, it's and still voluntary. To it, they, if they they're agreeing to it, have to do it. Well, I, I know but they've agreed to do it and we're paying them for it. So to me, it's no longer quote unquote voluntary. It, they're, they're, it's, it's an, once you've signed an agreement, it's no longer voluntary. It is an agreement, it's a contract. Mm -hmm. So you know, I read it that the vol voluntary portion has to do with the fact that their original contract doesn't, it doesn't speak to any kind of adjustment. They are voluntarily entering into a contract. And right. once they're in a contract, it is no longer voluntary. That's true. That's true. So, and it's also fully enforceable, whether it says voluntary or not. Well, and I just feel as though, you know, they're getting paid hmm. for this. I just want people to be clear on that, that the, the, the town is paying to have this happen. And Situate Wind is being made whole. Right. So th there's no harm to them. Hmm. Mr. Goodrich, did you have your hand up? No, I mean, I, hmm. I was going back to Morris comment. I mean, I, part of this for me, I, I mean, I, I want to just make sure on Sunday that this thing is at 11 o'clock and it, I think we'll know I, and I know what you're saying that if it's they're really starting to shut it off or if they commercially available, I think that'll it'll be very telling. Um, I, I think to me and to, to others how how it operates and we can certainly always revisit that. But um, for now, I just want to make sure we can get this done. So it's right. ready for Sunday. I, I Andrew, I completely <laughs> agree with you that it's the risk. The goal of this is to affect a turnoff on Sunday, basically. And this agreement will do that. Um, if we want to revise the language, um, I would hesitate to get into the weeds with it without affecting, in my personal opinion, put this into effect. And if the board feels it needs to be revised or revisited, then we can negotiate with, with Situate Wind. But if we start that now, it's not getting shut down on Sunday. I don't want to fumble up the five yard line. I mean, in, no, in that's the fair. I mean, that's fair. I mean, I might be splitting hairs, but then I have another question. Can you define for me, Jim, down below, because I can't, it, maybe it's in the original agreement somewhere. What's the definition of a non-start incident? So the yeah, very last paragraph. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. So they go and to I, turn it back on at six o'clock and it doesn't fire up. Then we have to pay them damages. Yeah, then we have to pay them damages. I believe what it says is, you know, whatever it is, $1,900 a month capped. Is that right, Jim? I think so, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I mean, I just, look, I, I know this has been a long, contentious <laughs> discussion, but you know, I know Tony would agree with me. I think Andrew would agree with me. Situa Wind has been very cooperative with this the entire time. They know what we want. They know what we're trying to do. And they will do their best to do it. And, and again, I, I talked to Gordon. We can't see incidences where you're not going to be able to shut it off. I mean, I don't know what that would be. But they've been a, a willing partner in this. And they're going to do what we ask them to do. So... I don't see them playing around. I don't see them trying to fudge. We'll shut it down, start at 11. We'll do it, you know, start turning it back on. We'll shut it down from 11 to 6. I have, I have faith that they will 
do they level best to meet the requirements of this agreement? Yeah, and to Karen Connolly's point is they have no financial disincentive to do that because we're making them all to, to, to you know, not fulfill their agreement. So, um, what do you guys uh, think? I mean, we want to get it right, obviously. We also want to get it effective um, so that we can start the summer evenings off without it running. Um, would someone entertain, I don't know, what do you guys want to do? You want if to you want to do it, because there's nothing in your packet. And I apologize for getting it out late. I was out sick a couple of days last week when I was supposed to be working on this. Um, right. The motion would simply be to have the board execute the voluntary curtailment agreement with Situate Wing. I'll make that motion if everybody's good with it. Mr. Goodrich, is that a second? <laughs> <laughs> or is it just a Seconds. thumbs up? Well, I thought he was going to make it, but yeah, seconds. Um, all right, so the motion has been made by Mr. Vinani and seconded by Mr. Goodrich. Is there any further discussion? Okay, <laughs> consternation. Um, I do see a hand raised. Mr. Darty. <laughs> surprisingly would like to comment before we vote. Um, David, I will unmute you and ask for your pithy comments because it's 1027. I just wanna know, can you hear me? Yes, sir. What's the term of this contract? Is it auto renewable on an annual basis or is it from the term remainder of the entire uh, remainder of the contract that you have with Situate Win? That's a very good uh, co uh, question. Mr. Bedreau, do you, I don't have it in front of me. Oh, wait, Jim, you're still muted. Uh, this is for this summer, and the board would have to revisit it and sign a new agreement for next year because obviously the rates will change. So this is the rates for this year. Yeah, so we can't enter, and that's a very good point. Good question. We can't enter an agreement without the rates because we don't know what they're going to be. We don't know what the rates are going to be. So yes, it is. It is a hole in the uh, in the plan, but you can't write a contract that says. I mean, I suppose you could, but it, it would be difficult to write a contract that doesn't have the rates. All right. We know you're not going anywhere, so. <laughs> Any other comments? All right. Uh, I think that was the only hand. Yep. All right, we had a motion and a sec. Did you, one more thing, Mr. Darty, and then we're gonna go to bed. <laughs> it should be year round, year round. All right, enough of that, goodbye. <laughs> Um, we have a motion before us and a second to uh, affect the uh, contract as presented. Uh, this would require, if there's no other further comments on it, then we, this requires a roll call vote. Ms. Canfield? Yes. Mr. Pignani? Yes. Ms. Conley? Yes. Ms. Curran? Yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes. Great. Motion carries, the contract will go into effect on Sunday. Well, it doesn't affect now, but the, uh, it will impact as of this Sunday. And I just wanna thank the board for uh, the amount of attention and determination to try to make some progress on this, um, on this issue. So thank you. And, yes, Tony. Yeah, and I just wanna thank Sigil Wind as well for yes. um, this Jim motion earlier. Yes, so um, yes, they've been very cooperative and hopefully we will all get a good night's sleep this summer and we will um, continue to, and, and, and I just want to note, as uh, some of my colleagues have noted before, this doesn't mean we're going, okay, we're all done. You're muted. Ah. Jim's so happy I was muted. All that stuff I said. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we will move on. With that, I think that was a sign from the gods, the wind gods. <laughs> Um, we have a discussion vote on a ratification of temporary. Thank you, David, by the way. Uh, we have a discussion um, vote on a ratification of temporary extension of premises for the River Club for the Situate High School Senior Dinner Dance. Mr. Bedreau. Yeah, so in a nutshell, the board has already approved um, the uh, change of premises for the 
Remember Club, but it was Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and I believe Sunday. Didn't include Wednesday. This is really a one-off uh, for the high school to have their end of the year dinner dances. They're going to break it into two. Uh, it'll be over by nine o'clock. It's on a Wednesday, so I've approved it, and the board needs to sign off on it. I'm delighted for them. Uh, is there any further question or comments from the board on this matter? None of us have a senior, do we? This year? No. Okay. Uh, so we are not, no one has to recuse themselves. Uh, is there a motion on this? <laughs> Move that the board, select board ratify the temporary license issued by the town administrator to the River Club for a temporary extension of premises and outdoor seating license for an event on Wednesday, June 2nd, 2021, in accordance with the COVID-19 order number 35 and consistent with the process of approving such requests established by the select board. Motion by Ms. Kern, is there a second? Second by Mr. Vignani. Is there further discussion? This requires a roll call vote. Ms. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Vignani? Yes. Ms. Conley? Yes. Ms. Curran? Yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes. Thank you. The motion carries 5-1, uh, five, 5-0, five, sorry. <laughs> Um, next is a uh, ratific. Uh, I'm sorry, a discussion discussion vote on the Situate Harbor Community Building Committee charge. Uh, the board did receive this, uh, I believe, as a late entry to our package separately, um, and it is um, an outline of how we are going to move forward with the information we gleaned from the survey and from the prior study on use of that building. Um, Mr. Goodrich, I, I was kind enough to draft this and Mr. Bedreau has added some. So Andrew, would you like to add to this? Sure. It's, so here's the beauty is that this charge was already done about a decade ago uh, with the Pure 44 Building Options and Feasibility Study Committee in which it laid out two phases to figure out what to do with Pier 44. They completed um, phase one, but phase two was never completed. So this is essentially, this is not essentially, this actually is just a continuation of that original charge to complete number two. Now I renamed it just because I really wanted a good acronym for it. <laughs> I it commend you on your effort to make it a shark. <laughs> make the best, so it's gonna be the shark commission <laughs> City of Harbor Advisory Redevelopment Commission. Um, but besides, it, it's, it's really the same um, goal. And the goal for phase two is to get the cost estimate and consider the current building conditions. And here's how we're going to narrow it towards the public park concept option based on our survey and what we've learned in the last years. So then we come back from this committee or commission, and here is your menu of options that we can now get. I guess, we just do an RFP, I don't know. And we finally decided we can bring this to town meeting. I get, and I followed the same sort of concept that the original charge did in actually picking folks um, from uh, already established committees. And certainly there can be some discussion if we thought those were the most appropriate, but I kept it very small uh, and I guess I really feel strongly about one of those, uh, one of those five, but um, I guess that's up for discussion. So that's my Reader's Digest version of this, if that makes okay. sense. So the charge further requires the committee to finish their work in 90 days, 90 which days. is lovely. And the committees that are, I don't, I'm sorry, I've got several screens here. So it's, if you could just tell me the, just say out loud what the, sure. the, the department. The Recreation Committee, the Coastal Advisory Commission, Economic Development, Disability Commission, and the Harbor Cultural Commission. And then there'll be a liaison from the select board. Um, uh, the reasoning behind this, if there's gonna be a park concept, Recreation Committee certainly makes sense. For Harbor Resiliency, um, because of just the the immediate access to the water, obviously, uh, and all the harbor resiliency plans have already done, which already incorporate this section. I included Coastal Advisory Commission uh, because in the survey concept, uh, the survey answers, there was some discussion of 
trying to just bring people in from other towns. So even though this is not, it's not a commercial type building, it can't be, there's still an element to bring people in. So economic development is there. The one that I think is actually the most important uh, is the Disability Commission. If this is gonna be the new centerpiece of the harbor, humbly in my own opinion, I think we have to make sure that it's accessible to everybody. And this is at the forefront of how we're gonna be able to use that park. So if this is gonna be front and center, I don't want those discussions to come later. Can everyone access it? No, let's talk about that now and up front. So that's my humble opinion why I wanted to make sure that someone was represented there. And then Harbor Cultural Commission has always been involved from prior and obviously just the, um, the ability to bring in um, uh, that voice of, of the cultural committee, I think will be key. So that's kind of the reasoning. I know it's small, but I was trying to think of some disparate parts with some thought around us. Great. Well, thank you for lodging that. We did, we did, I think all of us agree that we wanted a nimble group. Um, and then once it's fleshed out, we can start rolling out to, to implementation in larger group. Um, comments and questions on the proposed charter? Yep. Oh, sorry, Ms. Kerr and then Ms. Connolly. Oh, sorry. Um, Andrew, thank you. It looks great. I um, my only addition, and then, then I know when I say this, somebody's probably going to want to add someone else just because we all always want to try to keep it an odd number for voting purposes. But I think waterways should be on it as well, a member from the Waterways Commission. And the, and the reason why I share that is that they are also looking at working on um, initiatives with the state, with Jericho Park right there, um, adjacent to the City of Harbor building. Um, so I think it would be nice to be able to collaborate and really leverage both projects at the same time if possible, um, as well as obviously their knowledge of, um, you know, a lot of feedback and, and, and whatnot that they get with regards to the harbor area. So that would be my only addition is to have somebody from Waterways also be a member. I should comment. I recognize that there's an even number and I thought we may either want to add or subtract someone. So um, it's whatever <laughs> people think. So waterways sounds great. I mean, yeah, I, I agree. I agree with Mara on that one because you know I love when we don't do things in silos, and this is an opportunity to really bring in different groups. Miss um, Connolly, you were next. No, I just want to say thank you for doing it. It, it looks good. Uh, any further questions or comments about the charges proposed? No. Um, I presume that we will, I mean, Lorraine's away this week, but I just presume that we will populate this in the process of all of our normal boards and um, committees applications and, and not, I mean, the, the, well, the, well, I guess that's a question. We could expedite it and seek, well, um, go ahead. Yeah, if they're represented, if oh, right. Wait, I'm sorry. It's late. Doesn't matter. We can. Yeah. So we just put it out there and, and then who on with committee volunteers who's not overrun with other yep. committees. Yes. I stand corrected. It is late and I got confused there momentarily. So you're right. It won't matter. We're, just, we're moving forward. <laughs> Let's go forward. All right. Is, uh, would anyone like to make a motion on this matter? <laughs> would anyone like to take over? <laughs> Move that we Move. accept the charge as written. Uh, motion by Ms. Connolly, uh, as, no, as amended. Oh, as amended. I'd like to amend, yeah. Amended yeah. to include Waterways uh, representative. Uh, we have a motion, a second? Second by Ms. Curran. Is there any further discussion? All right, seeing none, this requires a roll call vote. Ms. Campion? Yes. Mr. Bignani? Yes. Ms. Connolly? Yes. Ms. Curran? Yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes. Great, the motion carries 5-0. Andrew, thank you so much for your work on this. I look very much forward to uh, taking the next steps on this. Uh, we are now on to new business and we're gonna jam it out in 20 minutes. Um, a discussion vote on the Hawker Peddler license renewal for Beacon Truck. Uh, my only question is, Jim, is he gonna be able to go out to the lighthouse? Is that where he wants to be? Yeah, he'll be able to go out there. 
Okay. So it will uh, be out of there hopefully by the end of the week or after. Okay. This is the coffee truck that I think this is their second or third year. I've lost yes. track. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there any questions or comments about this license? Uh, I mean, I just I'd like to make one comment that I got from a coffee shop owner in town who doesn't believe it's fair that the board allows a coffee truck when he's paying taxes. So very vocal about it. Make sure I kept a good eye on where he's making my coffee. Yeah, uh, that's a reasonable complaint. I don't think we've ever heard uh, complaints from the ice cream shops for those hawkers, though. We have, but there's yeah. a there is a uh, part Distance. of the bylaws. Yeah. It has to be three hundred feet. I think it is away from yeah. the closest establishment. Yeah, and this okay. is this is no different. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, is there any further discussion on this license? Thank you, Jim, for that contribution. Um, no. Would somebody like to make a motion? Move the board to select and approve to renew the Hawker Petters license to Beacon Coffee Truck for the 2021 season, pending Board of Health final approval. Moved by Mr. Vignani. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Kern. Is there any further discussion? Uh, this requires a roll call vote. Canfield? Yes. Mr. Vignani? Yes. Ms. Conley? Yes. Ms. Curran? Yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes. Motion carries 5-0. The next is to discuss and vote two additional, uh, two drain layer license renewals. They've been reviewed by DPW and are before us now. Are there any questions or comments about these two applications? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. Get there. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't see it. Oh. I have a wine and mold one. Now that's next. Yeah, uh, that's the only one I see as well. Oh, uh, Michelle, do we have a, a motion on this? Oh, sorry about that, folks. Yep. Uh, move to approve the renewal of drain layers license for Gregory Flamer, DBA GA Flamer LLC, would be the first motion. So and, moved. And this, so moved by Mr. Vignani and seconded by? Second. Ms. Curran, and is there a second motion? And second motion would be moved to approve the renewal of drain layers license for CC Construction Inc. So moved. moved by Mr. Vignani, seconded by Ms. Curran as well. Um, is there any further discussion on these two applications? Seeing none, this requires a roll call vote. Unless there's an objection, we will do both as one vote. Um, if, you, if you would like to do them separately, let me know when you vote. Okay, Ms. Canfield? Yes. Mr. Vignani? Yes. Ms. Conley? Yes. Ms. Curran? Yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes. Motions, both motions carry 5-0. Uh, now we're on to the one day wine and malt is uh, Michael Apria catering at the Citroën Maritime Center in May 16th. Is there, um, we have all the backup on this. Is there a motion? Would the Board of Selectmen approve a one day wine and malt license to Michael Aprea for an event at Citroën Maritime Center on May 16th, 2021 from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m.? Moved by Mr. Vignani. Is there a second? Second, second. by Ms. Curran and, and third by Mr. Goodridge. I assume he's on the catering list, right? Yes. Or, okay. I just hadn't seen the name. Um, great. Uh, if there's no further discussion, then it's a roll call vote. Ms. Canfield? Yes. Mr. Vignani? Yes. Ms. Conley? Yes. Ms. Curran? Yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Motion carries 5 0. Excited to see that we're having events again, even if yes. they're small. Um, so now it brings us to discussion vote on boards and committee appointments, the first of which is the Board of Registrars. Um, I do not have, I, I, I'm not down to those pages. So um, I am. Tony. Do you just want an update or? Yes. Could you just give us the background? Because I don't have that open. Um, just for the board of registrars, it gets in error. We, um, it was recommended that we appoint Ann Cuneo only for a year when really it's supposed to be um, three years of overlapping terms. So we just need to correct that and reappoint her um, for the term to expire in 2023. Great. Any questions? Is there a motion? 
move to reappoint Ann Cuneo as a registrar, then the term expires in 2023. Moved by Ms. Kern, is there a second? Second by Mr. Vignani, any further discussion? Roll call vote. Ms. Campion? Yes. Mr. Vignani? Yes. Ms. Conley? Yes. Ms. Curran? Yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you for your service, Ann. Um, now we have the Tenant Housing Authority um, board member. And um, if somebody has that in front of them, we, we obviously we interviewed um, a candidate earlier in our meeting hours and hours ago. Um, but we also, I believe, had three other candidates. Would you just remind us of the names? Because I don't have it in front of me and I don't want to skirt up. It's, uh, yep, Patricia. I, I, yep, Go got him. Okay. Tony's got it. <laughs> you want me to read it? Okay. Patricia, um, I don't know if we go, if she goes by Coyle or Altieri. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Diane Leonard, Arthur Leslie, and Clarence Walker. Okay. What was Arthur's last name? I'm sorry. Leslie. Leslie. Okay. And Clarence Walker. Okay. Um, and as I mentioned before, Ms. Mulcahy had uh, withdrawn her application. So um, what do you guys think? I mean, we, obviously everybody has a different skill and set that they bring to the table. Um, I don't, I was looking for my notes and I have to apologize. I'm not as organized on this as I like to be. Um, Diane, Diane has, did send us a lovely follow-up letter. She's very earnestly interested, but I believe she's only been living there a year, correct? Is that anyone else's notes? Um, so Diane and Clarence both are relatively new residents, I believe. Uh, mm -hmm. Did anyone else have, I mean, they're all, I mean, we're lucky to have a choice as always, you know, of, of good people that raise their hand. Um, did anyone have a strong candidate they wanted to advocate for? As I scroll well, through my notes. Because they were, they all, they were all good. And... Yeah. Right, does somebody want to summarize? I, I'm sorry, I am looking for my notes, which are buried in this stupid notebook. Um, I can tell you what my notes are, but other people may have heard different things, right? Okay. Um, so Diane Leonard um, wants to see uh, more efficiencies, very positive about the role, new to town, um, has an associate degree in accounting. And then of course you saw that she did do that extra research to um, um, follow up. Um, Arthur Leslie was a retired United States Army veteran in the medical Corps, worked at Walter Reed, um, was elect electrician or electronic technician, I think actually, mm -hmm. um, considers himself uh, a good troubleshooter, um, is a 14 year resident and is, has good mediating skills. And that's what he shared with us. And then Clarence Walker, um, was a corrections officer. He's been at Lincoln Park for 15 months. He wants to participate in the community and incorporate a community feedback. And I have written down, he seems to be very philosophical. <laughs> yeah, I know that's the best part of this process, getting to meet new people. <laughs> yeah. And so then those Patricia, are my notes. I don't know what other notes other folks wrote down. Yeah, and, and Diane, how long has she been there? I know, I didn't think it was that long. Do you, you know? Um, she was newish. I just have new to town. I, I don't know. Yeah, have... I think it's been a year, only a year, if, if I recall correctly, which is fine, but. Um... Well, may I ask a question? Of course. Uh, two questions. One is, are all of these, um, how are, are all of these housings, I know one is federal, two are state. Are they all over, do they have to be over 60, over 65? Is there some age or, and the reason I'm asking is because that might have a bearing on someone only being there a year or two. That's actually a, a really good point. Go ahead, Ms. Kern. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say, I don't think any of them are. Is it maybe central? I can't recall. I think it's needs-based. I don't think it's age-based. Yeah, I don't think so either. Well, well, it could be very wrong. Did, did I read that somewhere that we should give some sort of preference to someone in the federal housing 
versus state or all things being equal that you okay. give, there is, there is some preference. Now, whether or not it, it is definitive, I don't have it in front of me, but so in other words, if right. you have two equally qualified candidates, you should give preference to the one in the federal housing. Uh, eligibility, it says a tenant may, uh, sorry, I've got squishy screens here. Oh crap, and I just lost the page. <laughs> uh, if I can jump in, it is in the beginning of the packet. Um, yeah, I was gonna say, I know you And it, it does say that a federally subsidized public housing applicant does have priority but the best candidate is acceptable. And okay. we're not required to choose a federally subsidized public housing applicant. Okay, oh, and the federal and the federal was Still. Patsy. Um, and, that would be Patsy, Patsy and Arthur. And Arthur. And, Arthur. And, Arthur. and Arthur, okay. Okay. All right, gosh. I'll just give you my thoughts as we're trying to move yeah. along. Yeah. My, I'll give you my top two. I love Diane's research. That was wonderful. My top two are Clarence and Patricia. Being a correctional off officer, dealing with folks, I thought was immense. And I loved his energy. I thought he was, it was just, he was on the ball. He was just, I, I just, I just liked how he presented and his energy for, for doing this. And Patricia surprised me with, um, being a landlord, I think is important yeah. to have those different aspects and can just kind of understanding, I don't know, I was, um, I like that aspect. So those are my top two, but. Um. Yeah, I, I actually agree with that. Both of those assessments. <laughs> um, you know, I did like that. I, I was surprised too, that she had had that, those varied experiences. Cause I think you need those perspectives. Um, she's at Central, right? Yeah, so she's shown Central and Arthur's at Lincoln. I mean, uh, Clarence is at Lincoln. Um, any other comments or inputs on the candidates? I just repeat what Andrew said. I, I kind of felt the same way. I thought that uh, I thought that those two were, in my eyes, the stronger candidates. Um, a lot of energy and uh, the landlord thing really caught me as well as someone that's used to dealing with those types of issues that are, I think are gonna come at her mm -hmm. or come at the candidate, whoever it happens to be. But then Clarence seemed like he was really involved in the community too. So I thought that he could, uh, uh, I, I got the sense that he was out walking around and being being involved in what was going on and would be really attentive to uh, the situation of the, mm -hmm. the units. Yeah, I got that sense too. Any other comments? This is so hard. I think it's the hardest thing we do, honestly. <laughs> it's turning away good people when we have so many options. Um, are these meetings public? I mean, I assume it's like other meetings they can, if somebody they is are, interested. I don't know that they're Zooming, but they are public, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So anyone with any other candidates are more than welcome to. Um, to participate that they wouldn't necessarily, they wouldn't be a voting member. And it's a five-year appointment, right? It is a long appointment. That's pretty long. So the opportunity for some other folks to jump in at some point might arise <laughs> sooner. Would anyone, is anyone? I'll make I'll a motion. Willing, I'll be willing to make a motion. <laughs> oh, this is exciting. Okay. Oh, go right. ahead, Tony. No, no. Oh. Can we have a drum roll? <laughs> I mean, I, we're not going to make a bad decision. There's, no, there's right. four good candidates. Uh, I'll make a motion that we appoint Clarence Walker. Um, yes. Okay. Uh, wait, is there an official? Hold on. Uh, there's language. There's always language. Yeah. For a term of five years, completion of. That's not in the packet. Oh, do we have, it might be in the early part. It's in the beginning. Shall I read it? Yes, yeah. please. <laughs> Move to appoint Clarence Walker as the tenant board member to the Situate Housing Authority effective May 15th, 2021 for a term of five years or until a successor is named and completion of the conflict of interest law online training program is completed within 30 days. Moved by Mr. Villani. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Curran. Is there any further discussion on this matter? 
Saying none, this requires a roll call vote. Ms. Canfield? Yes. Mr. Vignani? Yes. Ms. Conley? Yes. Ms. Curran? Yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Congratulations, Mr. Walker. And thank you so much to everyone that, um, that uh, uh, applied. We appreciate you raising your hand and please don't be a stranger to town business or to this committee. Um, and I assume that Michelle, somebody will let him know tomorrow or how that gets done. Yes, I'm happy to do so. Okay, thank you, Michelle. Um, great, uh, that leaves us, brings us to employee appointments. Does anyone have that page handy? Yes. Would anyone like to tell me what we're doing? Because <laughs> I don't have that page. <laughs> Uh, move to appoint the following individuals for a term of one year or until a successor is named. Agent of Veterans Benefits, Don Knapp. Archivist, Jody McDonough. Assistant Town Accountant, Mary Santino. Uh, Citizen Rep of Scholarship Committee, Judith Byrne Aru. Uh, custody, custodian of Tax Title Property, Pamela Avotaba. Custodian of Veterans Graves, Don Knapp. Fair Housing Officer, Jim Boudreau. Fence Viewer. Paul Murphy, field driver, Neil Duggan, license agent, Sergeant Jerry O'Brien, local auction permit agent, Pam Avatabla, uh, Logan Airport Massport representative, Kyle Boyd, Mass Bay Trans Transportation Authority, Al Bangert, Metropolitan Area Planning Council, Kyle Boyd, Social Recycling Cooperative, Sean McCarthy, State Ethics Commission, Jim Boudreau, Sustainable South Shore, Mrs. Scanlon, Tree Warren, Mike Breen, Veterans Aid, Don Knapp. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vignani. Just a quick question, Jim. Are you still awake? <laughs> is this is employee appointments? Are Lisa Scanlon and and uh, Al Banger considered employees, or does that matter? It doesn't matter for this. Okay. All right. Uh, we have a motion uh, by Mr. Vignani. Are there any further? A second by Ms. Kern. Are there any further comments or questions about this matter? I think everybody is a repeat. There's no one there, right? I believe so. Okay. Want well, to make a second? With Kyle Boyd to MAP. Kyle, Kyle is the only new one, right? Because of his elevation. Mr. Goodrich? Did Move you? to appoint the following. Oh, we did, we did that already. I'll say no, he's for three years now. That's the difference. Oh. oh, there's a second group? Yeah. Oh, there's sorry. One. I'm still on page one. Go ahead. Uh, move to appoint the following individuals for a term of three years or until a successor is named, South Shore Coalition, Kyle Boyd. Great. Um, is there a second? Second. Second, second by Ms. Curran. Is there any further discussion about these two motions? If there is none, then we will do a roll call vote on both. If you would like to do separate them, indicate when you vote. Ms. Canfield? Yes. Mr. Vignani? Yes. Ms. Conley? Yes. Ms. Curran? Yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes. Motion carries 5-0. We have one minute to finish our meeting. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. We are on to other business, which are liaison reports. Anyone with a burning liaison report? No? I will just note, as everyone, as Ms. Curran well knows, we have town meeting um, election, town elections on May 22nd. Um, and um, a reminder to the board that the Council on Aging ribbon cutting is this Thursday. Uh, the intent of that event is to thank the team that made this all possible. Um, the building has already been open basically um, and serving the public for the last month. So um, come and see it. Uh, if, if you can make an appointment, great. Um, otherwise you might have to wait at the door just because of capacity issues. But all of their programming is online and is changing daily as the CDC um, uh, guidelines change. So that's very exciting. And the only other thing is we do have three applicants for our internship program. Um, they're all good applicants. Unfortunately, they all want the same position. So we, um, and which is research. So um, uh, Bob uh, Clark is gonna lead that process, but um, it's still open if anyone knows of someone interested in either charter review or communications. We would love to see some more applicants in those areas. Uh, any other liaisons or reports? Okay. Uh, correspondence, Madam Clerk? Mercifully brief. Uh, the <laughs> Situate Sister City uh, project is um, their last film of the year is coming up. 
It is Monsieur Lazar. Uh, it was nominated for an Oscar in 2012 for Best Foreign Film. They will be uh, running it on May 20th, 2021 at 7.30 via Zoom. And if you would like more information, just go to the town Facebook page and you will see um, how to get access to the Zoom movie. Great, that's it? That's it. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, the last item is approval of mini meeting minutes. Do we have a motion? Move to accept the meeting minutes for the select board meeting held on April 27 and 2021. Moved by Mr. Goodrich, is there a second? Second. second. Second by Ms. Connolly. Are there any further questions or comments or additions to those? Saying uh, none. A further motion. Oh, further motion, please. Move to accept and not release the select board executive session meeting minutes for the meeting held on April 27th, 2021, since the matters discussed are still pending at this time. Moved by Mr. Goodrich. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Vignani. Is there further discussion? Seeing none, we will take these as one vote unless you indicate otherwise. So roll call vote. Ms. Campfield? Yes. Mr. Vignani? Yes. Ms. Conley? Yes. Ms. Curran? Yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes. Motion carries 5-0, which leads us to our last is to have a motion for adjournment and um, encourage all of the board to come tomorrow to see Michelle to sign documents that need to be signed. <laughs> is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? Ms. Connolly? Uh, this requires a roll call vote. Ms. Campfield? Yes. Mr. Vignani? Yes. Ms. Conley? Yes. Ms. Curran? Yes. Mr. Goodrich? Yes. Motion carries 5-0. We are adjourned and um, look forward to seeing you all after the election and we reorganize our board <laughs> at the next meeting. So uh, thank you everyone. Have a great night and uh, have a, and be safe. Good night. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Sarah. Safely, Nance. Bye. Thank you.